All right, guys, we are back with another episode of The Masochist. Shout out to Simone Hossman for inventing the series. Uh, but first, would you like to make your Master Duel experience a whole lot better? Are you ready to take your Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Play experience to a new level? The Untapped GG Companion is here for you. Use the deck tracker to know exactly what cards you have in your deck and to go over any cards you aren't familiar with yet by hovering over them. It instantly updates when you draw a card and automatically hides if you check your extra deck or graveyard. This is the perfect tool to help you master a new deck. The Untapped GG Companion also lets you import decks directly into the game in seconds. Copy any YDK or YDKE deck string, create a new deck in game, click the Start Auto Import button, and let us take the wheel. Once the duel is over, check your win rate on your personal stats page. Brag among your friends and share your decks so they can import them into the game too. Start your path to master today by downloading the Untapped GG Companion at ygom.untapped.gg. All right, guys, I have a huge announcement. We, first of all, look at this. I reorganized everything. Chaos Pile, Dark Warrior, Pendulum Pile, uh, Yugi Jr., Normal Monster Mash. We got a new deck. It's called Hot Sauce. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I am frustrated. I'm tired. And I have no reason to be. I'm just being dramatic. But the world, the way it's been treating us, the game is leading us in a direction. I don't want to say what that direction is out loud, but... We have to do what we have to do. This is a deck that I've been promising. Every single episode, I want to play a new new deck. We have to go to the dark side. I didn't want to have to do this. This is the way the world has been pushing me. Every single, every single time, we pull a floodgate. We pull some kind of floodgate every time. Officially, we are playing the floodgate deck. Hot sauce. Uh, this is it. It looks stupid, but uh, trust me, it is. Uh, this is, there's a lot going on here. We've got every floodgate I've ever pulled. It's a fire deck. It's a pure fire deck. Everything else has been cut. And the, uh, we've been pulling some actually pretty crazy fire cards over the course of time that we've been playing. Flameville Baby. Discard. Uh, boost the fire. Permanently. Permanently boost the fire. It's a tuner. That's pretty crazy. Uh, then we've got some Evolite. And we've got some Jurak cards. I swear to you, I thought this was one archetype the whole time. I just learned that this is not the same archetype. Uh, then we've got some barrier statues, of course, that's like built around the deck. This burns, which is crazy. A lot of these cards randomly burn, which is crazy. We also have three, four boss, five boss monsters, actually, six boss monsters. Ignis Heat, which lets you tribute any of the floodgates to summon itself. That's crazy. 2400 attack tributes a floodgate to summon itself. We've got two of those because we pulled two for some reason. We've got Goka, which is another like free special summon that can boost its attack. This can special summon for free when a fire monster gets destroyed for any reason, including us crashing, and it lets you special summon and then burn, which is pretty cool. Then we've got Madeon, which just happens to be fire. I'm playing Dark World Dealings because um, the point of this deck isn't actually to progress us in the rank. The point of this deck is to actually just farm free wins. That's that's what this entire deck does. It's making our opponent rage quit. Because the reality is, I'm not going to get to Diamond just based on this deck. I've seen the Masochist decks that have actually gotten to uh, really high ranks. Some people have said they've gotten to Diamond. Um, and I've seen some posts here and there, but some of those decks look kind of crazy. So I don't know if how, many, how long they've been playing. I'll put up a post of what I've seen a, a Masochist deck. Obviously, you know, I, I, they could have been playing for four months. And I'm kind of held to a time constraint where I have to duel within an episode. And then I have to edit and then I have to upload it. I, theoretically, someone could be playing Masochist for four hours a day every day. They're going to they're gonna pull enough good stuff eventually. So that's always possible. We, we have every protection card. We're even playing Dark World Dealings. Yes, this can help our opponent draw the out. But if we're going first, this will help us dig for the barrier statue or the piece we need. Uh, we're also playing this card. It's insane. It's like revival for the barrier statue. A boost for 500 attack. Uh, we also pulled this a long time ago. It's like Wabaku, but we have to discard. I Literally just Wabaku, but discard. And then we play every single card that could possibly help us. We also have this card, which is Two Kings Return, uh, which will bring back the True Dracos. Unfortunately, uh, this searches a True Draco spell card, but we don't have any. I checked. Um, and then I played a small Salamangre core in here, but it just absolutely sucked. Never came up, so I cut it. This card's insane, too. Once per turn, banish a fire monster. Target one card in your opponent's graveyard. Banish that target. It's like it's like call by the grave every single turn. Like When I was playing against the computer, that, that was just doing... It was doing the most. Um, and then our extra deck is pretty much the same as always, but we've got Susha, which is a fire. We've got Crooked Hook, which is a fire. And we have the Noble Knight, which is a fire. I also have the... I have some stuff 
from the uh, what are they called Mechanko cards but they just absolutely just did not like they were just we don't have enough of them to like actually play the engine so I didn't play that but yes this is our new deck that we're going to be using for this episode and if it does really badly I have to switch back to something else on a side note here for the Yugi Jr. deck and I've reorganized all these decks um, I've added like you guys have said a few things to the Yugi Jr. I've added the purple poison because he's actually kind of good for this and then for our normal monster mash I've also added um, the fish because there's actually two fish that we have interesting we have the buzzsaw shark and then we have actually a level four fish that happens to be a normal monster so it's good for the that is in one ugly ass card too um, and then we have that too so it's pretty cool there and then pendulum pile I'll show you everything we have for pendulum pile this is basically every pendulum card we have it's not ready yet like I've tried dueling with it in the solo mode and honestly it's just a little bit breaky but we have a lot of cool pieces like we have the numeria guy we have a few different sofa cords we have the sofa cord monster and then we've also got the um not so far what are they called again i forgot what they're called but um not magic specters we have we have another ur it is uh i forget it's the, it's the pendulum archetype that the pops your pops the spawn makes your opponent pop spawn trap cards i forget what it is but we also have that card in the ur too but overall we've got a lot of cool stuff i have a lot of gems right now so i gotta go uh i gotta go get some packs all right we just won the coin flip and we chose to go first i just realized i completely forgot to switch the game i switched the deck so there we guess we're just playing this deck our hand is actually not that bad we're going to normal summon this and then we're going to special summon this and doesn't matter defense but this thing floats theoretically but i'm going to go straight into time thief i like I, I didn't mean for this to happen i i meant to play the other deck but i guess it's fine i guess we'll play this um what i realized too is that just time thief is flat out not enough it's it's not it's not enough it's just um i love time thief but in Diamond, when people make... I should have said Shrink. I don't know why I didn't set Shrink. Whatever. In, in in Diamond, where people make, like, full boards, and they're making really, really, like, strong boards, um, one Time Thief, especially if we don't get a trap off the top, is just just straight up. It's just not enough. I, I, I wish it was. I wish Time Thief was better for... Like, it's a very good card. It's been our boss monster the last few episodes. But the thing is, unless we get a trap card, it just basically moves itself out of the way for like 90% of the time. The draw effect is obviously good, but if we don't get a spell card, then it sucks. Here comes Gamma. Um, that really sucks, but I'm just going to make our monster disappear. Uh, but it's irrelevant, I think, because... Yeah, no, it'll, it, it's actually good because, yeah, well, um, it will return, I suppose. Because it's using a different effect. He'll negate the first effect to like attach, but at least it'll come back at the end phase. Uh, it really sucks that we didn't set the shrink but i mean I don't, I don't even know what he's gonna do uh we're in a bad state too because now he can go into uh, because he did it on his turn he can actually go into the synchro monster right now uh, which is fairly annoying the cyframe omega yeah he's gonna do something he's either gonna link summon synchro summon he's gonna do something with them he's gonna synchro summon probably into omega yep omega Sucks, but it's the reality. Omega doesn't really matter because he's going to take a card out of our hands. Going to be Shrink or the Trimagistus. It's irrelevant. Who cares? He's going to go straight to battle phase. Um, I can prevent him from attacking, but he can quick effect anyway. Uh, no, during the during the main phase, he can do it. But I honestly, I'm just saving myself 2,800, which I don't think is actually that useful, to be honest with you. So I'm just going to let him hit me for. 28 that's actually shocking i expected so much more but he could be a back row deck and set five now on top of the omega which would suck yeah he's going to activate the omega to get a card out of our hand it's irrelevant doesn't matter neither of them are really act it's kind of relevant but it's whatever it, it doesn't it doesn't really really matter now he's going to go into this which is super random okay the fengli I, this is the order of the things that are being done right now are just so weird. This is just shocking to me. Like, what is he doing? It's Omega. Attacks. Leaves the battle phase. Goes into this. Goes into Pot. Like, what is going on? Well, Pot is actually kind of smart because I guess he doesn't... Um, yeah, the Pot's not bad. The Pot... Because then he got to do the full damage from Omega. He didn't have to do half the damage. He's going to go to Maxi, which... You know our deck. doesn't matter. Alright, they're going to set two pass and leave this on the board up. Fine with me. Let's bring back Time Thief. And that's it. Let's draw for turn. We got Unbreakable Spirit. Activate the Time Thief. Actually, got to see what this dude does. That's fine. 
You got a monster. We always get a monster, like 99% of the time. His deck is weird. Alright, so we are going to enter the battle phase and just attack over this. I don't see another plant monster, so I'm just going to attack it. I don't know what else he's playing. He's playing a very weird deck. I was going to say it could be possibly the Masochist deck, but um, special summon a fur hire. So he's going to be able to special summon fur hire. Okay, I'll check out which fur hire it is. We got demolished by fur hire last, last time. He's going to summon this one. On summon, he gets to add a trap or a spell or trap. Which sucks. I don't have any interruptions for that. I'm, I am going to attack and get rid of it, but... Rex is like a really actually kind of good card. Our opponent's playing a very weird deck. He's playing like for a hire with a plant card that has nothing to do with anything. It's a little weird, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to set the Unbreakable Spirit and we're just going to pass here. This is good enough. Yeah, this should be good enough. We have Unbreakable Spirit to protect ourselves. The Ledger Book. We should be, we should be alright. Let's get Omega, bring back the shrink that I should have set, and you can actually, Omega's pretty good, he can help him out, our monster. We're gonna get a spell card, I'm, I'm happy with that, it's a royal rare call by the grave. That looks absolutely beautiful. Are they gonna fossil dig? Probably add another Rex, because Rex is a dinosaur. Oh, never mind, it's a miscellaneous sword, I'm just... I, I'm going to stop pretending I know what our opponent's playing right now. This is like the most endless loop of nonsense I've ever seen. Well, I guess he can banish it in order to summon a Rex from the deck. Because if he banishes Rex plus Miscellaneous Source, he can summon a Rex. It's kind of a crazy comp. Yeah, I'm just just going to pretend I, know, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> this is kind of crazy. Like I, I, Our opponent's just, just absolutely doing it right now. Like He's just... Oh no, never mind. It's a Jirac Alio, which is a level one. Um He can go into a level nine synchro. I'm I'm not really scared of any level nine synchros off the top of my head right now, so I'm fine with it. It's gonna summon that thing again, which is really annoying. The Rex for Hire, which is not a tuner, so I'm still not too concerned. He can go into a level three, but I'm I'm still kinda fine here. We do have, like I said, we have the ledger book when we need to have it. He's gonna search another card that'll probably activate, so I'll see in a moment what it is. During the main phase, he's gonna activate that. Let me actually read what he searched here. Tribute one monster, special summon one. See, this is a quick effect. Oh, never mind. he's gonna go into a Goyo Defender. That's just something. Alright, so I think the right move to make right now is to activate this each this uh, ledger book. Uh, because I want him to tribute his monster. Because I don't want him to summon more shit from the, from the extra deck. So, more Goya Defenders. I'd rather him use the card in his hand, tribute this, and then out his monster. Because I, really, I don't want him to summon more of these. Yeah, this is exactly what I wanted him to do. To summon a far higher monster from his hand. Which is, which is exactly what I wanted. I didn't want to have to deal with... Uh, Multiple Goyo defenders coming out, so it's it's cool. He can he can summon out the for higher monster from his hand. Cause that way he has to waste the resource. Whatever he summons is fine. It, it summons one from the deck, which is going to be slightly. And then our our card um, just like doesn't float into anything, and this just kind of sits here. In this way, he doesn't he doesn't have to gain the life point. So he actually kind of helped us. Maxi plus this. I'm just. I don't know what to say. Like, I've, I've never seen anything like what I'm seeing right now. Like, what in the world is our opponent doing? Like, what is he going to go with the sprite now? Nope, not the sprite. Okay, he's going to go into donor. That's fine, still. I'm not going to shock on the time thief. No matter what. He's going to summon another for hire from hand or graveyard. Donor is kind of a crazy card. He's going to summon back the same exact card. And and Rex. Rex. Did he use Rex already? Did he search? I think he used Rex already, right? What does he do? Okay, he's, he, has, he has the ability to destroy our monster, so we're going to activate it in response. That way we can dodge around his stuff. Hopefully he doesn't have anything, but we'll see. So we'll use both. We'll use this. 
and then we'll use this. Detach both of his small world's not bad, depending on what else we draw. All right, he's gonna go into an IP. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure why. I, he, IP. That's a really random one, especially with no other monsters. I mean, I guess he has the Omega coming back, but oh, he scoops! Wow, fantastic! Yeah, I don't know. Those were like, I almost want to say those were like bot plays. I want to say that's a real human being. Maybe he was just learning the deck. I don't want to be too negative. Like, legitimately, maybe he was learning the deck, but that was like. That was, that was goofy business. I, I I don't know what was going on there. All right, we got three legacy tickets. Awesome. All right, just out of curiosity, this is the deck he was playing. I'm just, like, it's just such an odd deck. I mean, it's not the oddest deck in the world. I think the play, the play style was more odd than the deck. The Goyo Defenders, Triple Goyo Defender. Goyo Defender's not a bad card, but, like, what was the end goal with the Goyo Defenders? I don't even know. I was more scared of them than I should have been because I don't even see what he was going to do with them here based on his extra deck, like... This was just, and then, like, one illusion of chaos, one magician's souls. Like, dude, what is going on in here? I'm, I'm, I'm in shock. All right, let's open this legacy, no, master pack. Let's open this master pack. It seems to be glowing, which is cool. And then after this, I actually have to switch decks. Despite the fact that I just won, I have to switch decks uh, just to try something new. Uh, we've got another Evil Eye card, which we already have. I swear, we're going to end up playing Evil Eye. Where are if thou searches any level one monster, which is kind of good. Uh, but we have to control a level one monster and then we get to yeah, or we take damage So we can search Vijam, which is I guess nice We can search Jester Confit, which we have which I guess is nice But our level ones don't really uh, Vijam's a good card The problem is we have a way to summon it from the deck Which is the the other the cubic ascension, so we don't really like need to search it uh, Malicious is cool, but without multiple it's might as well just be a 800 attack monster that's level six now what is cool is that uh, we do actually have Destiny Fusion, if you remember correctly, or, yeah, Destiny Fusion. So, we now have a really good target to send, plus we have Destiny Fusion. So, if we can get Malicious, multiple Destiny Fusions, and if we finally get an extra deck monster, Destiny Hero, then we can maybe use that. Uh, Springin's Booty is our second time pulling it. We almost have a playset, now we have two. Uh, but I definitely want this Great Sea Gand Gandala. Uh, technically, what this this is like somewhat of a negate, so if a face of Exceed monster, we control these the field, we can target one effect monster. Our opponent controls, neither bug can activate that monster's effects. Now, that is, somebody mentioned before, it's like, oh, it's like if Time Thief leaves the field, it's like a negate. It's not really like a negate, it prevents your opponent's monster from activating. If it was a negate, it'd be much cooler, uh, because then they could summon something like and then we could respond, banish, and then target, and then negate. That'd be, like, cool. But the problem is it's a little too slow because, essentially, they would have to, like, summon something and then have an on-field effect that they could activate but doesn't activate on summon. And it's just, like I said, a little too slow. Uh, we've got memory loss. Okay, this card's, like, not actually that bad. Uh, when an effect of an at attack position monster opponent controls activate and negate the effect, if you do change that monster to face-up defense position. Like, that is just not... It's like Solemn Strike with no cost, with no destruction. It's, like, actually legitimately not a bad card. Uh, this is a half-decent, like, interruption. I guess we could possibly play that and mix that into our decks. Limit code. Uh, we don't have a lot of Cybers right now. Special, so, I don't, we don't have any Code Talker, so yeah, I don't think that's usable right now. Uh, Meteor Dragon's cool, but we don't have, like, the Red Eyes cards needed to play that. But anyway, this card got, like, totally power crap, even in the Red Eyes deck, because they have a new level 6. Then we have Scrap Beast. Uh, this wouldn't be too bad if we had more scrap stuff, but it's not really usable right now. Um, so overall, not like the worst pack in the world, but definitely like more stuff that we could use in the future rather than now. Except for memory loss, this card is really kind of attack position monster your opponent controls activates. It basically is a negate on anything. It negates plus it changes the monster to defense, which is kind of cool. Um, it could be good. It could be good. Uh, I don't know yet. I, I don't know if I'm playing it in the... It's it's not really a floodgate. It's more of an interruption, but I, it could be like the kind of interruption that we need. Let's go open some legacy tickets. So we got three legacy tickets. I kind of... I always want to... Whenever these legacy tickets, they actually kind of take a long time to open. Because all of these animations just for two cards is actually kind of dramatic. When I open on my like regular account, I just click skip, obviously. Spellbook, this... Uh, yeah, this is not good. Um... Lancer Dragon is defense position does piercing. Uh, this actually is would be kind of nice in our dragon decks. I'm probably going to include that's 1800 piercing. It's not bad. Plus, it doesn't like have some weird effect that changes stuff to defense defense position. Um, if anybody activates Pot of Greed, we get to draw an additional card. If only Pot of Greed wasn't banned. Insector Orb. We don't have any Insectors and target Insector. Exactly one Insector. Too much 
in Zector in that text. I don't think we're going to be able to use that. Uh, so that's gone. Yeah, that's great. That pot of greed card is like, totally useless. Uh, Two-man battle is during each player's end phase, the turn player can special summon a level 4 normal monster from their hand. That is actually... We do have that normal deck, but this is a little too slow. During each player's end phase, the turn player. So, like, okay, so we activate this end phase, summon a normal monster. What is that normal monster doing on the field at that time? The whole point is of us playing the normal monsters is to get, like... Is to get... You know, essentially the barrier, not the barriers, is to get Time Thief out, but like this summons it too late into the battle, but it's cool because it's normal monster support. And then we've got this goofy looking card. Uh, so not not too great on the pulls, except for Memory Loss. The only one that I could say we could probably use immediately is Memory Loss, but uh, like I said, I'm switching decks anyway. I don't think I'm going to be using that in the fire deck. Let me go, let me go, let's, let's go check actually. Let's go check if we can squeeze that in the fire deck, see if there's anything else. Because honestly, it really isn't like a bad card, but that's a very odd card. Like I've never even, I've never seen or heard this card. It's, actually, I probably have seen it somewhere and just kind of forgotten it. But at this time, I don't think there's anything that really, I don't think it's been more beneficial than the cards that we're playing right now. Maybe we could take out a Dark World Dealings and include Memory Loss. Uh, but for the most part, I think I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool trying to make our opponent rage quit. All right, we just won the coin flip actually. Um, Yep, we won the coin flip. We have a pretty decent hand with our Rage Quit deck. Uh, we're going to go ahead and normal summon this barrier statue. Uh, I don't any longer have to play in, into the Tiamon because I'm not playing him at all in this deck. So we'll just set two and pass. We have the barrier statue and we have recursion for the barrier statue, which is also kind of crazy. Uh, so we can actually go into a Link Monster or something. And then, yeah, we can actually go into a Link Monster and then main phase two. No, actually, no, this has to have control the monsters, but this isn't like the worst hand in the world. Uh, we have what we usually, what the deck is supposed to do, which is barrier statue plus two interruptions. Um, pretty good to get monsters off the board. As long as they don't draw imperm, we basically will probably win this. Uh, let's see, they're going to normal summon super heavy samurai. You can change its battle position. That's fine. It goes to 18 defense. All right, I'll live with it. Battle phase, end phase. Okay. Oh, we can attack and defense. All right. Uh, do I want to banish it, or do I want to just... Yeah, I probably want to banish it. Uh, yeah, I want to banish this off the field. I want to get rid of it. We're going to target this. We definitely want to draw some better stuff here. And I want to say I want to discard this, but I mean, I guess... Now, this thing is not doing anything anyway. This card is tributed. We can attack. We can, uh... Special summon Evolozar. I don't think that's happening right now, so I'm just going to discard that, banish that, and uh, now they have to end their turn. Because I know, actually, they don't have Imperm, because they're playing Super Heavy Samurai. They do not have Imperm. Okay. So as long as we just keep them on this little clock here, we're good. They actually don't have an out. That's great. Okay, that's good. So now we main phase two, and we have the. Unbreakable spirit, and then we pass. All right, yeah, they don't actually have Imper. Like, perfect. So, what do we have to worry about in in Super Heavy Samurai against against them? Like, what do we actually have to worry about? It's going to summon that, which is fine. It's going to go to battle phase. If we had a Moon Mirror Shield, we literally just this would be game. I think I'm going to go with the Unbreakable Spirit because I want to. I, I literally want to break his spirit. <laughs> I want him to think like, okay, my attacks are never going to go through. I quit. Like that's that's, that's what we want to see right now. And we're going to do some damage real quick. Uh, add one Super Heavy Samurai. That's fine. If we can get like a second Barrier Statue or something, that would be like the absolute best case scenario right now. Or like a monster that can actually get over stuff. End phase. Yeah, we're in a little bit of a slow situation. Flame Vault Baby can make our thing permanently go to 1400 attack. If only I could summon this Baba Barber while under the barrier statue, that would be great. But I can't. Uh, I gotta summon a fire monster. Unfortunately, I can summon a fire monster, but not the fire monster that we need to summon. I can summon... I can summon out a different fire monster. I can summon out this thing. But the problem is this requires no monsters to be on the field, which kind of sucks. Yeah, but I can special summon this. I can activate this to make this gain 400 permanently. And it's 1400, so that's probably not bad. I'll do that. And then I'll just go to battle. And we'll hope for the best here. 
If we could just draw a floodgate, that would be awesome right now. If we could hit us with one of the floodgates, he's going to summon this one, change itself to defense mode, he's going to attack with defense, and we are going to activate this to banish it. He's going to gain a thousand, which sucks, but I mean, we've got to do what we got to do. It would be awesome if we just had, if we just drew like something else that would really help us right now. End phase, he's going to have to get his monster back, which does suck for us, but I, I, this is not really going in a great direction for us. We can actually use that to prevent an attack next turn. All right, so we'll, we'll go like this. We'll end phase. We'll end phase. Yeah, when he enters battle phase, we can negate that, and then it won't be able to attack while in defense mode. Damn it, he's got two of them. This sucks. Yeah, he's got two of them. He's going to go to battle phase. All right, he's in the battle phase. Nothing I can really, really do. Let me try this. I guess we'll try this so we wipe out two monsters at least. There we go. Now he finally outed our, uh, outed our little, a little situation here. Eventually he was going to get outed, nothing we can really do. That kind of sucks. Now he just goes off and just destroys us. Yeah, now he's got this super heavy samurai, wakashi, and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, it sucks. We, we basically, from this point forward, just kind of lose. Uh, yeah, there's no point to stick around that. that it, it's, it's, it's over here. It, it's totally over. We we, lo we lose that one. And the second that barrier statue went down, we lost. All right, we just lost the coin flip. Our opponent chose to go first. We'll see. We'll see what kind of deck they're playing to see if we're going to be able to do anything here. They're going to add a Synchron. I probably will not want to sit through this because depending on what deck they're playing, this is pretty much over right now. He's going to mill a Magician Souls, which is not a relevant mill. But again, it just really depends on which deck he's playing right now. Because it could be very, very good or very, very bad. And activate Magician Soul, Special Summon. Yeah, send that. He's going to send a Cubic card to the graveyard. This card's actually pretty good. Cubic, uh, Unification of the Cubic Lord. Banish this card from your graveyard. Oh, but it needs a face-up Cubic Monster to leave the field. That kind of sucks. I still don't have any idea what our opponent is playing right now. I just... This looks so weird. I am still thinking about cutting like these Jurax and these... I, I might just cut them for like normal fire monsters to be honest with you. Because they just like... Some of them are good. Like this one is like usable. But some of these Jurax and Dinos like they just don't... I swear to you I thought they were one archetype. And I just like, recently realized they were two archetypes. Like certain ones are actually kind of good. And certain ones are just like, kind of trash. Like they're good ones like... Like this Evolite is... Yeah, it can summon another El Evolozar monster from your hand. Uh, but we don't have any other El Evolozar monsters, so I might as well cut it. Just play, like, some other monsters. I might, I might change some stuff around. Like, this is pretty good. El Evolozar Serato. Like, this card is actually, like, kind of decent. But some of these Evolite cards are just not that good. If this card's tributed, you could special summon one. Evolozar from your deck, which is like pretty good, but like we have we need a specific hand for that to really like work, which kind of sucks. Our opponent's gonna finally activate that special summon, burn himself, and now they're gonna start synchro summoning. Is that a synchro three? Okay, Metal Marcher. I haven't seen him in a while, but cool to see, I guess. All right, I don't know what our opponent was cooking up with the Metal Marcher and the Magician, but. They scooped. I didn't play a single card in my one. Uh, so we got two Legacy Tickets and Water Fairy, water Dragon Fairy, which I'm fairly sure has never come out in the TCG. Uh, by the way, we are once again one win away from Platinum 3, but it's not actually as big of a deal as I thought. Like I said, there's been people that apparently have gotten to Platinum 1 and someone even got to Diamond. Uh, interesting. I, I, I'd love to see the deck lists. All right, let's open a pack. Seems to be another hollow pack. Awesome. Maybe even better than a hollow pack. Look at that. Now it's super glowing. Now we've got Utopia. It's super glowing. Our opponent messed up and gave us a free win, essentially. Sunvine Sewing is a pretty good card, uh, but not really useful for us. Wing Beast Monsters. You can control Kenobi Target by your opponent's card effects. Don't have a lot of Wing Beast Monsters. Yeah, we don't have really all of the cards needed to make this fully usable right now, but it's, it's, it's an okay card. It's not the best. Firecrackers. 
going in our burn deck 100%. This is probably going to replace some stuff. This is discard, inflict a thousand, skip your next draw phase, whatever. It can help us end games. Uh, this really isn't bad. This is going in our burn deck. I'm actually, actually going to try to look at our... This is a Samorg card for the Samorg card that we just pulled. But this is the worst Samorg card that we could have possibly pulled. Because there are so many better Samorg cards than this card. Uh, unfortunately, this is like the very... This is actually the very, very, very first Samorg card. Before it was an archetype, let's see what this is. Super Heavy Samurai Monk Big Benkei. Wow. This is our UR. Shit has given me a comment. Yeah, this card's not a bad card by any means whatsoever. But we just absolutely don't have the Super Heavy Samurai cards in order to make this a playable card. But... I guess that is a better pull than not getting a pull at all. Why is this 1500 attack with like a million stars? Okay, so this card is just not really usable for us, but because um, we don't have a Springen's XYZ monster, and then it has an effect to detach and do stuff like we don't have any Spring. We got to check what Springen stuff we have. It is a fire card too. Will of the Salamangrates is our second copy. We just, I actually, this card's not bad, but we don't have enough Salamangrate monsters, and that's kind of the issue. Uh, so I have to kind of relook at that. And then we've got March of the Dark Brigade, which is not an awesome card. So out of all of this, Firecracker is definitely usable. Will is definitely usable. We only have three Salamangrates total, which kind of sucks. Uh, so the only thing that we can really use right now is a Firecracker. All right, let's see what we get out of these Legacy tickets. Um, another Barrier Statue would be nice, huh? What about that? Uh, another Fire Barrier Statue, complete the play set. Uh, that would be really, really cool. Noble Man Eater Bug. Let's not play around. And okay, so this what this basically does is it's basically like a snatch deal. So you can pay a thousand, target a face up monster your opponent controls, and a psychic monster you control. This is a psychic, and then switch those targets, and they can't change the battle position. Uh, it's not honestly a bad card. It basically, it's actually kind of a cool card, and it's a tuner. It's really kind of a cool card, if I'm being honest with you. It basically just, whatever, you can steal any monster your opponent has and just give them this moron. And then you can just attack their monster. So it's actually not a bad card, especially if you want to end the game. Not a bad card. Definitely interesting. Definitely an interesting card. There's, we pulled a lot of garbage, but that is actually better than the usual garbage. Uh, Maiden of the Aqua is not bad if we had an Umi deck. Big Wave, Small Wave, not a bad card if we had an Umi deck. If we ever pull all of the other Umi stuff, I would definitely play both of these cards. But right now, uh, it's not really possible. All right, so we're back in this fire section. I'm going to look at it. I, I'm probably going to take these Evolites out. They're just so weak. It's like embarrassing how weak they are. The Jurax are actually decent, uh, but the Evolites are just like such small monsters. There's literally, except for like maybe this guy's 19 normal something, but like the rest of them are just so weak. They are literally unusable. Uh, so now I think we're going to include Firecracker. And since a lot of them are dinosaurs, we should probably include Oviraptor. And I, I cut Vijom for now because he's not really super usable in the deck. But I should probably play this and maybe this. Uh, we also have Pluton, which we technically can use Pluton. But it's just 3,000 defense. It doesn't really do anything for us other than just be defense of 3000 so i'm going to save the deck like this just because this has actually like more strength more firepower so we're going to save the deck like this and see see how we do all right we just lost the coin flip unfortunately but depending on our hand it could still be okay our hand is it's okay is our, does it mean it's okay oh, it's an okay hand hand flame bell baby ignis heat goka messenger of peace ichiro <laughs> like Interesting, uh, they're playing a ritual deck that uses pre-prep, which means it could be interesting. Oh, they're playing the cheeseburgers. This is going to be rough. I don't think we're going to be able to do this. He's going to be able to attribute our ritual, our monsters for cost for their summons. I don't think this is going to work out for us, if I'm being honest. And I don't really have anything for him. All right, our opponent's been absolutely going off. I don't think this is a beatable archetype. Um... Mostly because he went first. I, I don't think this is going to be beatable for us. I'm actually shocked that these aren't fire monsters. How are they not fire monsters? How does a cooking archetype not fire? Uh, but, yeah, they're not fire. They're actually all darks, which is kind of odd. But I guess the cheeseburger, the original cheeseburger, is a dark monster. So, I suppose that makes sense that it is... It, everything's weird already. It's a, it's a fire warrior and it's a cheeseburger. But... Yeah, our opponent's just absolutely going off right now. Oh, never mind. I guess they just 
they came to a, to a halt here. But yeah, they went through cross sheet. They drew a bunch of stuff. They have trap cards. They have the counter trap that they searched. They have they have quite a bit of stuff ready to go right now. So we'll we'll, we'll see we'll see how stuff goes right now. Yeah, they drew. They 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 they, they went off. Let's just say that. Synchro Zone is actually pretty good right now, so we're going to try to activate Messenger of Peace and see where that gets us, see if they negate that. If they if they do or don't, we have Synchro Zone, so that could be usable. We are definitely going to be able to stall for a little bit because right now we don't have the best... We don't have the best hand, I'll say that. We don't have the best hand, but the thing is we do have Synchro Zone and we have Messenger of Peace and we have Ignis Heat to out our own floodgates, which is kind of cool. So we're going to set that. We're going to set this. And... The flame Veil, do we summon this? Do we not summon it? I mean, I suppose we probably summon it. Just, just, uh... We could summon it and then summon it with Goka. We can put Goka into play. But then he contribute our monsters, which kind of sucks. Okay, so he contribute our attack position monster. But what we can do is we can just set this. And then we can just pass here. And the next turn we can start going off. He can't tribute. He can tribute his novellas monster, but he can't tribute. Uh, he can only tribute an attack position monster, which is kind of cool. So we'll we'll make things happen. We'll see what our opponent does here. We'll see what they're cooking with here. We got to try to stall out till we get to the barrier statue. We have to. This is a, a battle. This one. Okay, he's got the diviner, which is an annoying card. Yeah, Diviner can send Natis, and then Natis can pop whatever he wants in play right now. Natis, I imagine he's going to pop the Messenger of Peace. Yeah, he's going to pop the Messenger of Peace, which we don't have a response to, unfortunately. And then he's going to do some more stuff here. Alright, he's going to Ritual Summon into the Little Novellas monster. He's going to change our monster to Attack Mode. He'll be able to draw... Target a, spa, a spell trap card, destroy it. He's going to target the Ichiro Ledger book. Uh, yeah, honestly, I don't think we're winning this game. This this game is a little, a little crazy. Uh, I'm going to try to use this effect. Yes, I'm going to try to use this effect. He does have the counter trap. But he also has other negates and stuff. I mean, I, I didn't realize how much backward removal this deck like actually had. It's actually kind of crazy, like how much backward removal this deck has. So I, I don't think it's gonna work because he has a lot of backward removal, and then we've got uh, Synchro Zone, which is like a cool card and to block attacks, and it would block all of his attacks. But the problem is that we have he's he's got like this thing pops spell and trap cards, and Herald of Diviner pops spell and trap cards. So I think we just have a really a really tough matchup right now. I don't think we're going to be able to to do this. He's going to recycle. Our opponent's going to end automatically. They're not even going to go to the battle phase. Um, they just are going to forget to attack despite the fact that it's their turn. They could have attacked, but I was going to activate Synchro Zone, but they just never enter the battle phase, which I guess is fine for us. I, I guess that's fine. They, I believe, still have the negate. That they can use if they want to but our hands not looking too good i mean literally unless this resolves and we i mean like even if that resolves unless that resolves and we draw a barrier statue we literally cannot win uh this does not um, yeah this does not really do anything for us i guess we summon it and try to attack maybe but then uh, this sucks if I summon it, they're just gonna tribute it, so I, I think it's over. Like this their their deck is just too too advanced for us right now. We're not gonna be able to beat that. Alright, we just won the coin flip. Our hand is absolutely unplayable until we activate Dark World Dealings and hopefully draw something better, but this is like really, really bad. Um Yeah, that's just terrible. Okay, I don't even know what to really say. I mean we can draw summon Ignis and this and then that's it. Yeah, we can summon Ignit. We can set up for this, which is kind of cool. The ceiling. Is this once per turn? Yeah, it's once per turn, so I'll discard this. Um, and then we'll set... Yeah, we'll just we'll see what they discard. They're probably going to discard something far more useful than we are. 
Okay, they're playing Dark Magician. We ha do we have a negate, so we'll just summon this in attack mode. We'll set this, and we have a graveyard interruption essentially, plus the cataclysm. So we have cataclysm and a graveyard interruption. Not the worst thing in the world. They're gonna activate Circle, which is already off to a bad start. All right, they're gonna send Dark Magician, and they're gonna do the effect. Uh, which effect did they say? Which effect they're doing? Special summon Dark Magician from the graveyard. So this is perfect. We're gonna activate the ceiling. Activate the ceiling immediately, yes. And we're going to banish Cataclysm in order to banish the Dark Magician out of their graveyard. And what's cool is it can banish it can banish a Dark Magician or it can banish a uh, spell card, which is kind of cool. And that just gets sent to the graveyard for nothing. It's kind of nice. Yeah, this card's like, an, like I said, it's like an endless call by the grave. We just have to just keep putting things in the graveyard. Uh, this is 100 attack points higher than Rod, which is kind of cool too. So if they normal summon Rod, we can get rid of Rod. And then we can tribute it during the end phase and draw two cards. He's going to send a Magician to the Graveyard, or a card to the Graveyard to summon Apprentice Illusion Magician. Which kind of sucks, but I mean, it's the reality. What are you going to do? He's going to activate Secret Village of the Spellcasters, which is something you never, ever, ever want to see. He's going to set a card before the battle phase. Our monsters can get destroyed. We can activate Cataclysm in order to summon this, and this has a decent amount of attack, and we're going to be able to burn our opponent. And we're going to have more Graveyard Interruption, which is kind of cool. And this has more attack than Dark Magician, but what does suck is that... Goka's... Why do we keep drawing these big-ass monsters, dude? Like, right now, if we drew... Like, right now, if we drew... The, uh, I, I probably should have kept the other Cataclysm and just discarded the Ignis Heat, but I mean, if we drew the Barrier Statue right now, we literally would have won, but we just keep, like, I know we have six big monsters, but to draw all of them right now is kind of frustrating. And then we just go to main phase, I think we have another, we have another Banish remaining, and we just pass here. Yeah, we have a lot of big monsters, but to draw all of them immediately is just kind of frustrating. Because Ignis is good when you have like an like too many spawn trap cards, he's good. But like our deck doesn't really go super plus. End phase, okay, that's good. Uh, no, we don't want to banish this graveyard banish. Like I said, this thing's kind of crazy, but we'll see how it goes. Rising is not a card that we need right now. <sighs> Man, if only this triggered in the graveyard, I would have kept it. That's not game, even if I tribute it right now. So we'll go for battle, and then we'll uh, we'll go for battle, and then if our opponent doesn't have anything next turn, yeah, if our opponent does not have anything next turn, we will try an OTK him with the stuff that we have. Our opponent's gonna set a card, go to end phase. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we're gonna draw. Synchro zone's not bad; it'll save us in a pinch. Honestly, I think we. I think we go Ignis Heat, right? I don't know what that could be. This is an anime deck, but I have to take a risk. I do have to take a risk, so I'm going to go ahead and tribute this in order to summon the Ignis Heat. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have anything that prevents anything. Torrential, of course. Of course, of course, of course. And now we're stuck with nothing. Except we have Rising, and Rising will allow us to special summon a monster back, which in this case I'm going to special summon this, and it'll come out at 31, if he doesn't have an interruption. Eternal Soul. I mean, I guess he could have done this at any time anyway. <sighs> Man, this sucks. And that just summoned from his hand, so now I'll summon this thing out. And unfortunately, this banishes a monster. Banish one monster on the field. This is unaffected because of Eternal Soul. That's irrelevant. And now we have flipped the duel, and he essentially will win now. Oh my god, it's always something stupid, man. Torrential. Tor it had to be Torrential. I would activate the Synchro Zone, but it literally does nothing against... I don't even know why I said it, because it does nothing against this card anyway, and you can search Dark Magic Attack regardless. And 
Yep, there's no point to activate it. I should have just kept it in my hand. And that's one of those situations where if I hadn't done that, you guys would have told me I'm not playing aggressive enough. If I had done it... Yeah, honestly, though, he, he could have outed my monster any time. If he just summoned the Dark Magician off Eternal Soul, activated Circle, he could just banish my monster with 2600 attack regardless. Um, I think at this point we just we just we have there's nothing I have no point to even set that because he can just activate it I think we just lose here there's nothing that we can do you can activate that it doesn't matter there's literally nothing that we can do I was gonna put Mahan on yeah there's, there's nothing all right and that's the game nothing uh, nothing we could have done there he could have outed us anytime but you could have outed the cataclysm anytime he wanted right now at that time, you could have just, anytime you wanted, summon the Dark Magician anyway. Alright, we just won the coin flip. Our hand is, I mean, somewhat playable. Crackdown, Cataclysm, Brave Drive, Shrink. Yeah, without the Barrier Statue, this hand is, like, absolutely unplayable. Oh, there it is. Uh, that'll do it. Uh... <laughs> We'll discard this data drive, and then just set everything else, I guess. If, if we lose the barrier statue, I guess we have the cataclysm to fall back on. He's gonna dis he's, play he's playing uh, trap trick. It's nice to see. Not really. Uh, we're gonna set these two, and we're just gonna pass here and just end phase. I just realized this really sucks. He just perfectly counters us. He double normal summoned trap trick monsters. Just fantastic. This double normal summoning trap trick monsters means that every single turn he has two two opportunities to out the barrier statues. Like he perfectly countered our deck, uh, essentially here. Every, yeah, like every single turn double normal summon against barrier statue, a card that prevents special summoning. And all of his monsters are like 15, 16, 1700 normal summons. So every one of them gets over the barrier statue. So this is probably going to be another loss right now. Our opponent's going to summon what? Nightmare Phoenix. Okay. That's one way to do it. Just a blind Nightmare Phoenix on my crackdown. Might as well activate it. Might as well just go for it. Not that it matters because... Obviously, it's gonna the monster's gonna get destroyed anyway. Our monster's gonna be uh, put back on his board anyway. He's gonna go to battle phase. I'm just gonna obviously activate shrink. Shrink will do enough to save our monster here. And yep, that outed his board, I guess. But he still has the double normal summon every single turn, which kind of sucks. Um, and he has the advantage of going into multiple traps. He should have just entered the battle phase. That's what he actually should have done. Fine, fine with me that he didn't do that. So now we're just going to enter the battle phase, start attacking. Yeah, he should have gone to battle phase, but he didn't. Now we just pass. Right, he's going to imperm us, which is awesome. Which means he can just do all of his normal plays now. He's going to use his second normal summon. Uh, I don't know if he has a trap trick monster in hand but i'm gonna guess based on the fact I, I have no basis for this but i'm just gonna hope that he doesn't have another trap trick monster in hand and i'm just gonna go into this because i can't afford him going into a sarah because if he goes into a sarah this is essentially over if he has another trap trick monster uh, i guess i guess that right that time uh he's gonna get his monster back his monster is how much attack 13 so we can't get over it so we need to draw a monster forbidden chalice will help us get over his monster all right, let's go to battle. Attack his monster. Activate Forbidden Chalice. Oof, almost. <laughs> that could have been bad. Compulsory Evacuation Device. <sighs> Should have done that in the damage step, but sometimes this game like will like miss timing on stuff, which is annoying. So sometimes I won't do it in the damage step. I should have just waited till the damage step, of course. I get penalized for it with a Compulsory Evacuation Device. Most random card of all time. Yeah, he's gonna get destroyed. He's gonna go into Sarah, and this duel's over. Essentially, it doesn't matter that we activate this or not. Uh, this duel's over. Yeah, why not? We'll burn our opponent. Not that it makes a difference. Now he goes into a Sarah and ends the duel. Yeah, this is this deck's not ready. This deck is absolutely not ready. Like that tiny misplay aside, this deck is just not like it, it's absolutely not ready. 
I guess we enter the battle phase and just try to attack him here. I'm not going to summon anything because I don't want him to activate any trap card whatsoever. I'm just going to try to go to battle phase and attack to get rid of this Sarah. But this deck is absolutely not ready. It's just it, now he's going to summon this, then he's going to summon a the card from the deck, then he's going to like it's just going he's going to go through this giant loop right now. And now he's going to summon Dianea. Diana is going to get bring back another one and this is this is why we lose. They just have they have too much advantage and we have none. It's it's just not going to happen. This deck is absolutely 1 million percent not ready yet. I, I try to make a fire stall whatever whatever this theme is, but it's just this deck is 100% not ready. Uh not good enough. All right, we just uh, won the coin flip. We're going first. Uh, our hand's okay. Um, we have Time Thief. I mean, that's better than whatever the heck we've been doing the last few games, so that's good. I'm just going to set this, and then I'm going to activate the Squire. Flipping that this monster up. Reduce it by one. Yes, change the level. Reduce it by one. And then we will activate, flip this. Uh, for some reason, we, are just, we draw shrink a whole lot and just not at the right time, <laughs> unfortunately. So shrink is kind of like, it's becoming kind of a little bit of a dead card when we don't have the barrier statue. It just doesn't really do anything. It just cuts attack. Um, so I guess we just set that and pass. And this is, this is like... Our, our last board was bad, but this is, like, I would argue equally bad. Like, Time Thief is good, but, like, if we rip a monster off the top, we essentially have an empty board right now. And if our opponent has any semblance of a meta strategy, we just we just automatically lose. So I guess we Time Thief take a card. Hopefully it's a trap. If it's not a trap, then this game's at the end of the line here. Uh, it's a Druid Swarm, which is a monster. So essentially we can just clear our own board plus shrink their attack. All right, our opponent activated reinforcements. That can be so many different things, so many different decks. Depending on this, it could be over. He's going to search for that. He's going to search for the Vanquished Soul, and this, this duel is pretty much over. We're not beating Vanquished Soul with a Time Thief and a Shrink. All right, next game. We got a Barrier Statue. We got the... We go in the coin flip. We got the Barrier Statue. We got the Ichuro thing. It's not bad, I guess. We got... The Cubic Ascension, Dark Renewal with no Spellcaster, so I'll leave it in hand because if they Feather Storm, Harpies Feather Us or something, it just we lose it for nothing, so we might as well just leave it. Not the worst hand in the world. It's definitely, definitely something here. Like I said, it, it's a decent hand, and at least we have monsters to back up the Barrier Statue, so if we use the Le Ledger Book, we can actually like follow up with something and not just lose afterwards. All right, our opponent's playing Gold Pride. They're going to activate, add a Gold Pride monster. Gold Pride's like an interesting deck because like they get, get they get their own life points down, which is nice. Um, they get their own life points down for us, uh, but we're going to make them gain life points. All right, so this this just lets him. This basically has 18 different effects that lets him special summon, but that's fine. Uh, he's going to go to battle phase, and we're going to activate the Ledger Book. Which the ledger book, I'm I'm a little bit iffy on the ledger book because the reason I don't like the ledger book to some degree is that it brings the monster back, and I I've, I've said this in the past to you guys I don't like the fact that it brings the monster back because it doesn't really deal with the problem like we still have to deal with the monster, shortly after we're still gonna have to deal with this like this end phase and they just bring the monster back, and now uh, next turn we have to deal with it so if we don't draw a big monster it doesn't really we can't get over it, yeah we have no way to get over it I mean this card floats. Yeah, we have Ron Ryu, it floats, so we can out this, but that's about it. This is not going to work for us. Uh, we can go into the barrier, st not barrier, we can go into Sioux Ship and then attack and then pop this. Which again, doesn't really do anything for us anyways. Uh, Cubic Ascension, I guess, does a little something. Uh, like I said, I'm just going to go to this and this. Attack and then attack and hope they don't have anything. Crash, can't activate the effect, and then we're going to attack with the barrier statue. And hope that they don't have another monster that can get over our monster. Uh, we might as well set this, because if we draw something, we can maybe use it immediately. I, unfortunately, we can't use Cubic Ascension, because Cubic Ascension uh, requires us to summon a dark monster. We can't right now. Hopefully, our best bet is that they just... Yep, yeah, th that, that is literally our best bet, is that this happens. So we draw for turn... 
my back to square one would actually be a pretty see this is where you got to ask yourself do you back to square one and put that on the top of their deck to draw the same crappy draw all over again or see this is where we should have left dark renewal in hand actually or do we just attack and i would say probably just attack but we should have left dark renewal in hand you just set it just in case you draw a spellcaster the majority of the monsters in this deck are spellcasters uh we're going to activate analyzer hoping our opponent negates it in some way nope they don't we don't have any rocks anyway it was all a bluff uh they don't matter i'm just gonna put them at the bottom of the deck it's irrelevant which order because something else will happen anyway go to battle Uh, this has 1700 defense. That's not good for next turn. Main phase two. And then we just pass here. Our opponent's going to set another card. Okay, we drew the Performa Pal Duelist Elite Man. Which I will summon. Because this does protect. Yeah, it has some protection effects. It's a Solemn Judgment or Summon. Which is, quite frankly, one of the most dramatic things I've ever seen in my life. So now we can activate this, the analyzer. Again, see what we get. But we're not going to get anything, obviously. We just want to hopefully get our opponent to waste the negate. And then we go to battle phase, and hopefully this can be destroyed by battle by our monster. We'll see, though. It's ash, and we can't destroy that. Not that it mattered, because... Not that it mattered anyway, I guess. Again, we just got to keep him off a monster. It can destroy our barrier statue, and we're good to go. Yeah, I really shouldn't have set this stupid Dark Renewal. Alright, our opponent's going to Normal Summon the Punk. Pay 600 life points. Their life points are quite low. They're going to be able to summon, get the Foxy. So next turn, they can actually Tribute Summon that thing, which is actually kind of scary. So we got to do some damage here quick. Yeah, that can be Tributed Summon. Oh, thank God. Thank the Lord, that's what we needed. Okay. That is exactly what we needed. Um... If we drew another level 4 monster, that would also be good because we can go into the Sioux ship. But our monsters seem to have forgotten about us. They, we, they're nowhere around. So we're going to go to battle phase. And we're going to attack with this to get his life points down even further. This is what we need. Uh, main phase 2. We're going to flip the barrier statue to defense. And we're going to activate the messenger of peace right here hopefully not in the imperm column and now we just pass here and we have a few a few turns because he almost got us there because he could attribute some in the the punk card but hopefully we bought ourselves some time because this gold dude is 1500 but it's 1500 or more attack so the gold dude is good okay thank god and now we can finally build some build some resources here. Maybe yeah, goodies. Here we go. This is this is what we wanted, guys. Uh, we will definitely resolve this. Pay the life points. Yes. And we'll flip this back to attack just because we have the Drew goodies play available to us now. What's scary is here. What's definitely scary right now is if he draws an out to our back row because then obviously we just lose here. So we just gotta hope he doesn't draw an out to the back row. All right, our opponent just scooped out of nowhere. Perfect. We annoyed him to we annoyed him into scooping. Best case scenario. And we got one legacy ticket. All right, let's open this master pack. Let's see what we get. Our last few URs have been absolutely useless. So, hopefully this one's not as bad. Um, Chlamydia Sundew isn't a bad like card, but just not really good for us. Jack Knight is not. A good card for us at all. Scramble Egg is actually a usable card because we literally have Sonic Chick. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, I, I never thought I'd ever consider using this card, but we literally have this. We have if a monster is destroyed by battle or card effect, sent to the graveyard, you can special summon a Sonic Chick. Technically, this is usable. We do have Sonic Chick. I don't know if I will use it at this point in the game. This is another Mechanko card, which do we already have this? So this is our second copy. If I can play Mechanko, I will. Cleefort Monolith is... Um, I guess it can go in our pendulum pile because, yeah, it can go in our pendulum pile for sure because its scale is really, 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 really good. It's a one scale. Let's see what this is. Offerings to Snake Deity, totally unusable. Um, yeah, target one reptile monster. You control two cards. Your opponent controls destroy those th all three. Tar Actually, that is usable. What am I talking about? 
Uh, so we have pulled some decent reptile stuff like black mamba and stuff like that. Um, this is just just a really actually decent card. I, I don't know why I said it wasn't usable. This is actually a good card. Uh, but we, I don't know if we have enough uh, reptile stuff. Uh, let me read this. This is, looks interesting. This card's actually not bad for general tribute support, but we don't really have like a tribute monster that's worth tribute summoning at this time. But this is actually kind of cool. Let's see what this UR is. The last few have been totally useless. Uh, this seems like it would join that. Two plus zombie monsters, meaning all monsters needed for this are going to have to be zombies. Uh, as far as this card goes, it's not a bad card. We just don't have the zombies necessary to play this card just yet. So, uh, we'll, we'll have to see. This Again, this is I'd have to build a zombie deck. And we have been pulling essentially the B tier of zombies so far. Like the only card, like Zombie Fraulein and the Devouring Guy are the only two that I can like really look at and go, wow, this is actually like kind of good. This is fully usable. But, like the majority of the zombies that we've been pulling have literally been the B tier of zombies. Uh, so, I don't think that this is going to be super usable for us. Alright, let's open this Legacy Ticket. It's, it's glowing, but they don't actually matter unless they are URs glowing. Um, this is a card we already have and we're not using it. Actually, we don't have one. What am I talking about? So this card is actually not like that bad. It's a 1500 normal summon. It's level 3, so we can use it with the MX Saber Invoker. It's level 3 normal summon. It becomes 1500 because you place two counters on it. And if you can remove a counter, if this card would be destroyed by battle, then it's not destroyed by battle. So it's actually not like a terrible insect card. And this is actually going to be a super rare since it is glowing, and we'll see what it is. Prime Material Dragon is, is a really, really good tribute summon monster that can definitely be usable for us. Yeah, Prime Material can definitely go into our Dragon deck for sure, which we haven't touched that in a long, 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 long time. I would say this this very well could go into that deck. It's actually quite a cool card. All right, guys, next game. Uh, this hand's not looking too bad. We've got Small World, Parallel Twister, Rocket Caliber. We've got a lot going on here. Uh, Barrier Statue's not going to do a damn thing right now, so I don't really see a point in searching it. Uh, honestly, there's not a lot of things that do a lot of things right now in our hand. I think we just save Parallel Twister, Small World, and Rocket Caliber. I don't think any of them really help us in any way right now. Yeah, I think we're just going to go Summon Win. And then we're going to Special Summon Run Ryu in Attack Mode. And then we're just going to go into Time Thief. And that's honestly the best situation that we've got right now. And then we just we just pass on this. I think that's uh, that's more than good enough. I, I it's the best play that we can make right now, unfortunately. Time thief and and pass. I think I think we just end on that. Uh, Parallel twister is becoming one of those cards that uh, I almost want to say it's getting power crept in our deck. Like it's not a bad card. The problem with Parallel Twister is that in, in a lot of situations it's just like going first. It does nothing. And then going second, it has such a heavy cost where you have to spend the spawn trap card. And our spawn trap cards are actually kind of important to us. We got a monster. It's a Vishuda. This duel is probably over. If we're getting a Vishuda as material, they're probably playing Sword Soul in this duel. Oh, never mind. I don't know. These people play weirdly. They always like set and then summon. Yeah, so he almost got me there. Uh, this duel is, is is pretty much over. We're not we're not beating this um, with the, with this particular hand. All right, real quick, I'm going to actually put the memory loss in, and I'm going to take out the Barrel of Twister. There's been so many times that that card just absolutely bricked us, so I'm going to go ahead and just save that. All right, so this hand is pretty good, honestly. So we've got Double Barrier Statue, which we're going to summon the Barrier Statue, and then we're going to activate Messenger of Peace because you don't doesn't there's no drawback to activating and then we set the threatening roar and then we just pass here so no matter what our opponent won't be able to attack because we have messenger of peace plus threatening roar so even if they summon with like a 1300 attack monster we're still good uh, looks to be a pretty decent setup if they have imperm obviously we're just cooked but imperm is only in 50 percent of decks in master duel so we'll see we'll see how it goes all right and our opponent scoops uh, rage crit is a win, so uh, I'm, I'm fine with it. I, I don't care if my opponent rage quits. That's that's good with me. All right, let's get this legacy pack. Uh, this one's got a UR. We've been like crazy on the polls this time. It's like every pack's got a super UR every single time. It's been kind of crazy. Uh, we're at the stage right now where we really need to accumulate better cards. Like absolutely, we have to do it because uh, the the decks that I've seen, I've seen one Reddit post where a deck reached diamond, and like I said, the deck uh, essentially. I had a ton of URs and SRs and stuff like that, so we just have to accumulate stuff like that. 
Vision Fusion is a Vision Hero Fusion card, so we don't have that. Skydive Scorcher is another hero card. It's actually not like a terrible card, but we just don't have enough heroes to make it playable yet. Uh, another Speedroid card to be kind of thrown in the pile. I don't think this is actually one of the better ones, but it, it is, you know, just another Speedroid card. A Lira Lusk. Uh, I, I don't, I don't think we have enough of these to really do anything with. Call of the Reaper is a Supe or Ant. Uh, cast and uh, uh, it's, not, it's not a card we can use and then we've got jetroid is a card i'm not going to use and then we've got a pearly card which i can use so so far not a single usable card let's see what this is magical stone excavation is a card that lets you add back a spell card by discarding two cards this card is such an odd card why did we get this card think of all of the spells to get why did we get this card uh, discard two cards target a spell in your graveyard add it back to your hand like there's not a single, there's no spells in our deck that we are dying to get back. Uh, this is like a really odd card. I'd really have to like look at it, but this is essentially recursion for any spell card in the game. But that is a heavy cost. You're going essentially minus two to get one singular spell card. It better be worth it. And unfortunately, I don't think we have any spells that are really worth pulling right now. Worth adding back from our graveyard. That is like, it's not a terrible card. It's just absolutely not usable by us we also got three legacy tickets from winning that game i just kind of went over it too fast but we got three legacy tickets let's see what we get out of these uh let's see we've got celtic guardian not being played crusadia um, not really usable yet we don't have enough crusadia cards we have some but not like a large amount i'm gonna i think i'm gonna alter the deck real quick after this too i want i want to keep making some changes um this is an old Pegasus card that blew up. It wasn't really that good. And then Buster, Rancher, I think we already have, but it only works with weak monsters right now. Which, uh, we kind of play monsters that aren't particularly strong, but not particularly weak. Uh, this card's not bad. It inflicts battle damage. You can target one monster in your graveyard. Special summon in defense mode, but it's a 100 attack monster that has to do damage. Um, and then we've got... Yeah, this isn't really workable for us. And then... Uh, this is a cool pendulum scale. I guess it's a uh, three. Um, actually, this has a cool pendulum effect where when a monster is destroyed by battle, you can special summon a normal monster uh, from your hand. So that's actually kind of cool for our normal monster deck. I think this goes in our normal monster deck. That's actually not a bad pendulum effect. I think I'm going to use that card. I'm going to definitely throw that in there. So a few changes will be made. All right, so first up, uh, I am going to put the Sea Dragon in there. He's not a fish, he's a Sea Serpent, so he can't replace uh, this card right here. But he'll replace something in here. I guess he can replace one of the... I need a light. We have the fire, water. We, we still have some usable stuff in here. I guess he can replace the Gold Driver, since that's... Actually, Gold Driver is a good stat. So I guess we'll, he'll replace the Great Angus, uh, just because he has a cool effect where he can actually special summon extra monsters. So we'll save that. All right, next up, we've got a few other cards on the list here. We've pulled a lot of zombies that are mildly usable, so it's kind of cool. Um, we've got a, a decent vampire package here, but we've pulled Frowline, which people have been telling me sort of to play, so I'm going to include that. I'm going to take out Gaga Magician, uh, just because it doesn't... Uh, it's not super needed right now in this deck, so I'll just take Gaga Magician out. I mean, I could take something else out, but I'll just try to take that out. And then, of course, we've got this one, Devouring Sarcophagus, which is another level 4 that's kind of decent, but it's a zombie, so it doesn't really play with our other cards here. It's a little frustrating. And this is the kind of, uh, like, you guys have to, whenever you guys tell me to, like, put a card in, please tell me which card to take out, because you guys often will tell me, like, oh, play this. And then it's like, the issue is there's only so many cards that I can run in a deck. I, I can't run, I'm not running a 60-card deck, because we actually want to see things like, there can only be one and stuff, so I'm not going to run a huge deck like that. I might take out Prey uh, and then try this, but I kind of like the Spell and Trap cards that we have, so it's just more additional. To I guess I'll try to take out the Prey for now, and then I'll put in the Devouring just to try new stuff, and it's a level 4, so I'll save that. All right, so we just won the coin flip. Our hand is really, really good. Um, we've got Barrier Statue, Rocket Caliber, Shrink, and Crackdown. It's just a really, really, really solid hand. I really don't have any complaints about this one. Um, like I said, Impermis in 50% of decks, and whether or not they draw it, you know, it'll depend on a number of things. They probably have Max C right now. Then we'll set Crackdown, set Shrink, and just pass. We have two ways to protect our Barrier Statue and Barrier Statue, and then we have Follow Up Level 4 Monsters. This is like, as far as this hand goes, it's about as ideal of a hand that our deck can do. It's either this or Time Thief. Those are our strategies right now until we pull something else, because right now, 
we somebody was telling me to build around firewall but we absolutely just firewall they're gonna go to end phase firewall requires four monsters and then you need to have additional monsters for it to do anything to like co-link uh, this is another card that might be on the chopping block. I like Back to Square One. It's my one of my favorite cards. I don't want to say of all time, but it's it's up it's up there. It's definitely a card that I really like quite a bit. But like it's one of those cards where it's just it's becoming maybe not as good as I would like it to be. Uh, it's Back to Square One. It ends up being somewhat bricky for us. So now we are going to enter battle, start attacking, and then we're going to attack again here. Yeah, like I said, back of square one is becoming like a brick fest for us, and I'm not really too thrilled about that. Uh, just because our deck is very, very made to go first, and while this is a good card and can help out stuff going second, the problem with back to square one is that it, um, it number one, it requires a discard cost, which is kind of a lot in our deck because we don't go plus whatsoever. And then secondly, it can it can create uh, really bad situations for us. Uh, we're going first, it does nothing, so we just kind of sit on a card that does nothing. Frau line is probably getting discarded right now. Uh, so I'm going to activate the back to square one. Whatever card this is, we want him to draw it again. So we're going to put the Frau line, discard that, put his monster back on the top of the deck. And yeah, we're going to put that on top of his deck, and then we're going to enter battle. We'll attack normal summon the Adaman, Adamancipator Analyzer, and then we're going to enter battle. I'm not going to bother to activate this thing just in case. Even though I want to bait out hand traps, I'm not going to. So now all these attacks should go through. We're going to attack with all of these. And theoretically, we should win this duel because he's drawing the same card he had last turn. So in theory, this should be the game for us. But I, don't, I mean, it literally should be the game. Like there's no explanation why it shouldn't be. Because he's going to draw the exact same card that he had set face down and... Theoretically, he should set it. Um, I imagine it's probably like a hand trap, like an Ash Blossom or something. But even if he sets the Ash Blossom, we have the Crackdown to take it afterwards. So it's fine. He might set some bluffs right now just to scare us, but nope, he doesn't. So now we just end phase. Um, does this change defense too? No, just attack. So it's fine. Whatever. Memory loss. We didn't get to use it, but cool to see it. Uh, let's go to battle phase. He's got 11. Okay, so I'm going to attack this. If it's an Ash Blossom, it's fine, because then we can just steal the Ash Blossom. We'll take some damage, but whatever. Yeah, it's an Ash Blossom. We predicted it all the way through. He has an Ash Blossom. We're going to activate Crackdown. We're going to take that Ash Blossom. Now that it's face up, because this only lets you take face up cards. So we're going to take that, move it out of the way, and we're just going to attack directly. And we, <clears throat> This should win us the game, unless he has some like Scrap Iron Scarecrow or something like that. But that's unlikely. So there you go. That's the game. That was a nice, clean, simple, simple win. This is what I was trying to do with the fire deck, but for some reason we we had an absolute brick fest with that fire deck. So I guess there's a few, a few. We have to wait until we pull better stuff, and then maybe we can convert. All right. So we got just no no legacy packs whatsoever, just five gems. All right. Let's open this master pack. Every single pack has been glowing, but every single pack has had cards that have not been useful whatsoever. So we'll see what we get. We got shock, a speedroid card, another speed, more speedroid stuff. Uh, this is a Chemocritter card, so right now I don't think it's usable for us. Uh, this is a Sylvan card, which again, I don't believe is usable for us right now. Uh, we've got... No, 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 no! Nebula Dragon! Guardian Slime! Whatever that is, and that is... Okay, this is actually kind of cool. Guardian Slime is a cool card, but we don't have the payoff for this whatsoever. This can block any damage, which is kind of cool. So if we take any damage, we can summon this and block, but we don't have anything to like search off of it. So that kind of sucks. Uh, this is a Vendred Ritual spell. We don't have any monsters. Nebula Dragon's cool, but we have to reveal a level 8 dragon, which we don't have. But if we did, I would use it, but we don't really have a point to use that yet. And this is a 3 level 7 monsters. Um, I don't think that's usable for us right now. Yeah, this card is not usable for us right now. It requires like a million things that we don't have right now, so that's not going to work. Uh, Ghost Fusion's cool, but we don't have uh, a, the Fusion Monster in the extra deck to use it. Guardian Slime, like I said, this is actually really, really cool. Really cool. It's going to essentially block any attack. It's a free summon, all that. Uh, but we don't get to actually search. We don't get to summon the God Slime. We don't have to get. We don't get to do anything. All we essentially get to do is just block an attack, um, and it summons a level ten. What utility do we have off of that? We don't have an Exceed monster we can summon. We don't have a Synchro summon we can do. We don't have anything. We don't. Yeah, there's nothing we can do with the level 10 once it hits the field. It just kind of sits there. So the problem is this card's missing a lot of its utility other than blocking an attack. So right now, I don't believe that this is really usable for us. 
All right, we just won the coin flip. Our hand's not looking too bad. Uh, we have Small World, Cubic Ascension. Uh, we can go into... Uh, we can go into... Honestly, I think we just saved the Small World. We can go into Time Thief. And that should be good. Time Thief, we have Small World. I don't, I don't think there's anything that we can really Small World into that would be too useful. This is the same situation we had last time where we just... We have Small World, but we don't have anything too, 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 too crazy to go into. I guess I can uh, Small World into Fraulein because she's like a uh, follow-up play. I guess I can go into her. But I think Time Thief and Save Resources is probably the best thing I can do. Uh, so we summon this out. And then these summon themselves when you have a Spellcaster. So we're going to go ahead and Special Summon them. Uh, I could Special Summon this, but like... Um, yeah, this doesn't really like better. So I'll just keep I'll keep this just in, so I can small world into something else next turn. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and go into the time thief. You know, you hope it's enough, but in reality, against a lot of decks, it's it's really not enough. So we're just gonna go that small world. I mean, like I said, time thief is an awesome card, but sometimes the problem with him is like unless you get a trap card or a spell card, he's just kind of. He's just banishing himself and then putting your opponent's monsters into grave, which can kind of not be all that useful for us. All right, standby phase. We're going to activate Time Thief. We're going to get off the top of his deck something. We'll see what it is. It's probably going to be... It's a trap card, actually. That's the best thing it could have been, and it's a mirror for So now we know our opponent's playing some nonsense, so we know not to, not to get too cocky before we attack. Our opponent's going to Dark Hole. Awesome. He just outs, the, uh, outs our card anyway. We're going to go ahead and activate Time Thief. Uh, we're going to detach a monster, not that it matters, but we're going to detach a monster. We can't detach a trap because our coal's not a valid target. It's because it's designated for the graveyard regardless. Wow, that sucks. So we essentially have one card left to use, which is the Cubic Ascension. And he's playing Blue Eyes, which means he's playing Chaos Max more than likely because he has Chaos Max leaves. But we'll see what we can do. All right, as our opponent goes off here, it's really frustrating how, like... Constructed blue eyes actually like really really good against us. It's actually in a lot of ways better than uh, better Against us than like not even constructed. This is like anime blue eyes. It's like anime blue eyes is constructed blue eyes This is like anime blue eyes. It's got like dark hole and um, Dark hole and mirror force and stuff like that. I don't know if you ever noticed this but like Anime players like people who just like anime decks for some reason They are the like the luckiest human beings you will ever meet in your life They will draw the most perfect hands every single time never brick down to the last card Like look at this. This requires a discard cost. He's gonna have it. He has the discard cost He has all this stuff. He's gonna be able to do everything like they never ever ever brick. It's like insane All right, so he searched fusion deployment off of the keeper, which is kind of crazy He doesn't have any fusion spells. He's gonna use fusion deployment to summon another blue eyes But little does he know there's a uh, vidjom coming in He's gonna summon a blue eyes and face down defense position Which means he can make a twin burst uh, if he summons twin burst we essentially lose because cubic ascension does not cu Twin burst actually beats cubic ascension which kind of sucks for us because it, it, it banishes the cubic monster like in every single way uh, blue eyes twin burst dragon counters uh, vidjom and we can only summon one Vigiam, it's not like we can summon a bunch. Yep, there's Twin Burst. So we essentially, essentially have lost right now. I guess we, we hope that Twin Burst attack first. We, we have to get Twin Burst attack out of the way first. Yeah, I, I have to take this attack. I have to take that attack. I hope he attacks with Twin Burst right now. Okay, perfect. So now we can block the rest of his attacks. And he got rid of, um, what's his name for no reason. So we're going to activate the Vijam now. He got rid of the alternative for absolutely no reason anyway. So that's perfect for us. So his poor play may, may allow us to win right now. I can activate this and then search Madeon and then shuffle everything back. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take the extra 1800 because I know he's not going to attack the monster. So I'm going to just do that. And then I'm going to shuffle everything, that, everything he has back. And uh, now we're at 2000, but we can put everything he has back in his hand. Which is good, because he has Fusion Deployment and this stuff, so it should be good. Time Thief returns. Uh, hopefully we get a monster, because then he, we can banish him off the board and play around stuff. So hopefully we get a monster. Uh, he's probably going to summon Jet, and Jet is like the, the, our Achilles heel. We just can't do anything about Jet. Ugh. Oh man, Jet's annoying. Alright, let's see. Uh, this The only thing I can destroy is Jet, so uh, let's see. Yeah, the only thing I can destroy is Jet, which is, like, irrelevant right now, but... I'm gonna activate Time Thief. Hopefully we get a monster. We get a trap card. Of course we get a trap card. But we, I guess that's an out to Jet, but it's not really an out to Jet. 
uh, because unfortunately Jet is good. If, if I put Jet on top of Executor, draw it next turn. So that doesn't really help. So we can go, we can start like, I guess tearing apart his board a little bit. We can, again, if we destroy Jet, it doesn't really benefit anything. Uh, May, May Tin can really help us a lot because it'll shuffle everything back. Mateon can help us, but like it doesn't even matter because then he'll re-normal summon this, he'll re-special summon this, he'll redo everything he has on the field next turn again. Uh, so that's not going to help. All right, so I'm just going to help try to out his board to the best of my ability. I'm going to activate the Time Thief Redoer, uh, detach the Mirror Force. I'm going to put the Jet on top of his deck so he can destroy stuff. And then I'm going to set this right here and I'm going to activate the Iron Dragon. I'm going to special summon it right here. And I'm going to pop this thing. So that's that's dealt with. Um, and then I'm going to normal summon the Nefariousness, dude. And I'm going to see what I can do here. I'm going to probably go into... I can go into the Sioux ship, which is probably the best idea right now. Because I have nothing to out anything else. So Sioux Ship is probably best. So I'm going to go Sioux Ship. These two right here. It would be awesome if I had a Zeus right now. Zeus would like absolutely kill it. All of the useless URs that we pulled. Zeus would absolutely kill it. So we're going to go now to battle phase. Uh, we're going to attack over this. Oh my god he can redirect attacks. Why did I forget that? Ugh, I totally forgot that. How did I forget that? Now we just lose. I just realized, yeah, now we just lose. Because you can that's not once per turn either. You can just do that unlimited amounts of times. Well, that sucks. Nothing we can do there. All right, he's going to draw a jet. It's in his hand. Uh, depending on what we get off the top of... Depending on what we get off the top here, I think we can or lose or win, but I guess we get a spell card now. So we can't even get him off the board. And I forgot to get Vijam back onto the board, but it doesn't matter because he has Jet, so it's kind of irrelevant. Yeah, this 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 duel is pretty much over. There's nothing we can do here. Alright, so we just, um, we just lost the coin flip, but our opponent actually chose for us to go first, which is fine with me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and normal summon the barrier statue. And I'm actually going to use Small World right now to go into, to get over to, I think, level 4 Spellcaster to bridge into something else to get into. We can get rid of this or this, probably Fraulein, because Fraulein doesn't really benefit us, because um, we can't Special Summon it anyway right now. But we're trying to get to another card. We're trying to get over to this dude right here. Dragoodies. We're trying to get to Dragoodies, so we need to pick something that has something in common with this, but nothing else. So, 1500 attack, 1500 defense. This has 15 no, different. Yep, that's light. Yep, uh, dragon level four. Okay, so if we get rid of rocket caliber, we should be able to get to Dragoodies. And uh, did we do it? Yep, we did it. We got the Dragoodies. Technically, I can go into this performer pal thing too, but uh, Dragoodies is technically speaking just a little bit better for us because I know how to use it better. <laughs> And I don't have to worry about uh, getting confused. So I'm going to go ahead and Pendulum Scale that plus this card floats. Um, so I'm going to scale that and I'm going to set the There Can Only Be One. And we just pass here and this should be... Again, he chose for us to go first so I don't know what he's playing. He can definitely like absolutely demolish us right now. Because if he just has like Lightning Storm it's essentially over. Uh, but that's the best play that I could possibly make uh, with what I had. Alright, they're going to start off by activating a Scale. Which is fine. It's Dragon Pulse Magician Scale. He's probably going to activate another scale. I don't know if he can get into anything else, but I guess we'll have to see. He's going to activate Pendulum. Whatever that is, it's fine. Pen Duelist Alliance, that's fine. But we have There Can Only Be One, which is really, actually, really good against his deck. He has a lot of spellcasters, so that should, should be pretty good. Technically, if he gets Purple Poison, that can out what we have going on. Uh, this can search any Pendulum monster, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but yeah, if he gets purple poison, he can pretty much out our board right now because he could just pop it with uh, with this card right here. He can just pop purple poison and then pop this, or he can pop this, or he can pop this. I mean, probably just a barrier statue, and then we're pretty much in in really bad shape again. He's gonna add pendulum call, 
I'm just going to discard a raw sphere mode and then add two cards. Now I know why he made us go first. He's going to add Oaf, what is that? Oaf, one of the dragons and Oaf Dragon. Yeah. And just, we actually have Oaf Dragon, I believe. He's going to activate the Dragon Pit, which is fine with me. He can't Pendulum Summon right now unless he has a Fire Monster, but we'll, we'll see what he has. We're going to activate to destroy a Spawn Trap card. Okay, he's going to destroy the Dragoodies. Which sucks, but I mean, it's not the end of the world. Uh, we're going to activate the Dragoodies for sure to search for ourselves. He's going to activate the other one to discard the monster. Our Dragoodies didn't go off for some reason. Oh, never mind, never mind. This is only in the monster. I forget. I always forget that only works there. He's going to destroy our barrier statue, but thankfully we still have... There can only be one, and if he Pendulum summons out Spellcasters, we can uh, stop that foolishness he's gonna summon uh, he's gonna he can activate us a, a magician and then target one pendulum monster add it to your hand uh, we're gonna go ahead and activate there can only be one but unfortunately I think this is not, we're not in a good situation because this can outspawn trap cards so yeah this is a once per turn but it can outspawn trap cards so unless we can out yeah this is, we're not in a good situation right now I mean technically speaking we have the golden dragon magician uh, but this can return a, a monster to the hand. It's not going to help whatsoever. I guess we'll, we'll see what we draw, but this is pretty much over. Back to square one. Can put this on. Yeah, we... we I mean, we, this can go back on the top of his deck, but I don't know what that really benefits. He can just pen, pendulum summon it out next turn anyway. Because uh, he has odd eyes in this. And he can pop our card, so... And then he can go into Electromite. There's nothing we can do. We lost this one. All right, we just won the coin flip. Let's see what we get here. Uh, we've got a hand that is definitely playable. Purple Poison, Dragoodies. There, back to square one. No, this I'm really like on the fence about keeping this card. Dark Renewal is good, but like we can't actually use it, unfortunately. Dark Renewal is another one. Like it's come up a couple of times, but not enough. We have Time Thief on board essentially, and that's basically about it. We have Time Thief. So I think we normal summon this, and we special summon the Run Ryu, and then we just go into Time Thief, because that's just the play we have right now. Go into Time Thief, summon that out right here, and then we just activate the Dragoodies, and we leave, I guess, two in hand, because neither of them, because unfortunately Time Thief's not a spellcaster. So we just leave that, and this is the best hand that we've got right now, honestly. So we just pass here and end. We also could have Dark Renewal because it is an interruption, and that's kind of cool. But yeah, we could have gone. We definitely, this this was more of a going second hand than going first. We had back to square one. We had um, the this thing, the purple poison. We had Dragoodies, but like this is like a gold. This is like a silver one going second. The like going second hand. It's a little too. Um, it's not good enough for where we are. Now our opponent's going to imperm our Time Thief, which essentially spells Doom here. Uh, they're playing Magicians, and uh, we pretty much have, have nothing to follow up. I should have just chained the Time Thief Redoer and detached and got him off the board, but I want to keep some kind of presence. I mean, I guess I keep that presence still, but that way I can draw goodies and, like, you know, destroy his monster. But he doesn't have the, the Magical Circle, so at least that's nice, but... We're not in the best situation. He's got Rod. He's going to be able to draw the Rod. He's going to be able to search. Yeah, we're really not in a good position here, unfortunately. And it sucks that this is going to be more than likely a loss, but we don't... Yeah, this this one's a loss. We can't... There's just too much advantage right now. He's, he's going to keep going, and all I have is a Time Thief. All right, so we just uh, won the coin flip, and we're going first. So we'll see how it goes. Um, this hand is actually decent... We have this, which can help a special summon a, a spellcaster, but I guess we just go for Devouring Sarcophagus, maybe. We'll see. And, I mean, this just it kind of blows. We we'll level one, flip it. Let's see if he's got an interruption. He's got some kind of interruptions here. Oh, he probably has a max C. Oh, Imperm. Fantastic. So now we have uh, Negated Penguin Squire that can't activate its effect. It's level 5, so we can't do anything. Trimagist just does nothing. Cubic Ascension does nothing. All of our cards essentially do nothing, and we're just, uh, we've lost this in every single way. Like, we just have to hope he drew uh, four hand traps, because otherwise we just, we have not a use, single usable card available to us right now. Alright, he's going to summon the Keeper of Dragon Magic. 
Uh, we'll see what this gets him, depending on what deck he's playing. He's playing branded. This duel's over. Uh, this just there's nothing we can do. That board is just terrible. There's nothing we can do. All right, we just lost the coin flip, and unfortunately, I have bad news. If we lose this one, we actually D rank again. So we're going from platinum four to platinum five. If we lose this one, uh, we've just been absolutely on a losing fest today. Just. It's been just terrible. It's 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 been like horrible. We've basically had time thief pass every single duel. Um, whenever it's not barrier state, it's either been barrier statue and we win, or time thief pass and we lose. So today has not been easy whatsoever. Our opponent's playing dark magician. He discarded eternal soul. He set an eternal soul. He has dark magician in rotation. He has apprentice illusion. Um, we have messenger of peace, but under eternal soul, dark magician is unaffected by everything, including messenger of peace. And now he's got. Dark Magician Girl, which means Magician Salvation is live. Uh, this is already looking just unwinnable either. Our other thing is like we just don't... We've gone back to the point where we just don't have boss monsters. Our boss monsters right now, he's going into this. It's probably Norido, the moral leader. He's probably going into that. Our our big... Oh, never mind. This is this thing mills, but our deck doesn't benefit from milling. Our deck has no boss monster. Like Time Thief is a cool boss monster, but a lot of the time he just... Like, as cool as Time Thief actually is, if we don't get a perfect hand, he actually doesn't do anything, which is kind of annoying. Uh, we have Small World, which Small World, I, I don't even know what Small World can benefit us right now. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and activate Small World here. I actually know exactly what we need to Small World into. We need to Small World into the Iron Dragon, which I'm going to do. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to go use the Crowley. And then we have to pick something that doesn't have anything to do with Iron Dragon. Which, Iron Dragon is 0 defense, 2,000 attack. So I think this should be it. Yeah, it's 0 defense, 2,000 attack, level 4, Dragon Dark. So I can do this and I can get into... I can get into the Iron Dragon. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, reveal that, banish that. And this should be here. Yep, there he is. Get our Iron Dragon out. And Iron Dragon should deal with... Uh, this dude so we're gonna go ahead and set yeah we're gonna set this card here and we're gonna set this here and now we can activate the penguin squire and iron dragon and we're gonna wait on that so we're gonna set the penguin squire uh, change the level yes by one we really want him to activate the eternal soul really 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 badly so we're gonna see what we're able to do here flip this into attack mode and now we can go into Time Thief. We got to play in the right column. Unfortunately, we don't have anything that's really high in attack. He's at 25, which sucks. But if he was at, you know, again, we don't have anything to really. Sue Ship isn't strong enough. This isn't strong enough. So I guess we have to go into Time Thief because at least he's playing a Spall Trap, like Spellcaster Trap, Monster, Heavy Deck. So we're going to go summon this here. So our Time Thief is still, you know, somewhat live. Um, the Iron Dragon is a quick effect, which is a good thing. Hopefully he activates that, shotguns it for some reason. I'd probably activate the Messenger of Peace, because we can get rid of it anytime we want to. And it'll prevent him from attacking us. Let me see what's in his graveyard. He's just got Eternal Soul, which is one Eternal Soul, and this is another Eternal Soul. He's got two Eternal Souls in Grave. I don't know what he's got in hand. I guess we go... We can save the Messenger of Peace. And I guess we go just to End Phase, because I want him to trigger this, and I want to destroy everything on his board. So I think I'm just going to go to End Phase, and then I'm going to activate the Iron Dragon if he activates the Eternal Soul. If he doesn't, then he doesn't. All right. So that kind of sucks. We're just kind of waiting for him to activate the Eternal Soul, and then we'll chain the Iron Dragon, because right now, Iron Dragon won't do anything, because he just won't activate Eternal Soul, and it won't out this monster. So we're still going to be where we are now. But at, we do also have the Unbreakable Spirit to out this monster if we need to, the Wallow. And we didn't leave any monsters in the He's going to draw Mahad and Special Summon Mahad. Awesome. Um, this is in draw phase, so I guess Mahad is alright, whatever. Mahad is really good against Time Thief because he gains 5,000 attack. Uh, well, he becomes 5,000 attack, which is really not cool. I should have just activated this Messenger of Peace, but whatever. You, you, you live, you learn. What can you? Yeah, he's gonna summon out the mod, and I guess we just don't do anything. We just wait. Uh, we're gonna activate the time thief to hopefully get a trap card or something. Well, even if we get a trap card, we just put Mahad on top of his deck. He draws it again, and then he gets to. Uh, he essentially gets to do the same thing all over again. Now he got a monster. 
just a Chronicle Magician. Not a good card, but better than nothing, I suppose. Yeah, I should have 100% activated this Messenger of Peace. He's going to go to Battle Phase. Um, I'm going to go ahead and activate the Iron Dragon. Iron Dragon is going to defend my life points to some degree. And yeah, we're going to summon it out here. I can't really use this Unbreakable Spirit right now. I'm just going to summon this right here. Unbreakable Spirit, unfortunately, won't work because it'll uh, it'll get over Mahad, but it doesn't really help otherwise. So we're just going to try to blow up this area. And that'll blow up the Eternal Soul. Now he'll have a replay. Now I'll actually get rid of the Time Thief and I'll put it... I'll put Time Thief into the... Uh, I'll put Time Thief in the, in the Banish Pile for us. And then next turn we can deal with the... We'll have the... Unbreakable Spirit with all that other stuff. Alright, he's going to attack the Palladium Oracle Mahad. And we're going to activate Time Thief here to defend ourselves. And we're going to detach. It doesn't matter what we detach, but we're going to detach something. And now he gains even more attack off this Wallow dude. Like I said, I'm, I'm saving this Unbreakable Spirit for later. But I guess he can summon a monster to his side of the field. He's going to summon the Penguin Squire. Yeah, this dude is actually, like, really, really good. We have this dude, but we don't have any level 6s to actually use with it. That's been, like, the story of this run. All right, end phase. Uh, our opponent has, uh, you know, it's a decent board. It's not the best board in the world, but it's a decent board. Uh, we'll see what we do here. Vidjom isn't bad. I guess he can protect our life points if everything else goes wrong. We're going to see what we get off the Time Thief. See if we get a monster again. Of course. Um... I guess we go to we go to battle and just out this dude because he's actually like I mean he's useless now but like he's actually kind of good because uh, he gives the attack boost to like the entire board which is kind of crazy so we go to battle phase attack this dude uh, activate the unbreakable spirit and um, yeah we're gonna attack over his monster now his monsters go back to normal. Main phase two, we're going to activate time the Messenger of Peace, and we're going to set Vijam. Uh, we have a decent amount of protection here, so we're going to just go right here, just in case, because I don't want him to relinquish Anima, our monster. Now we just pass, and hopefully this is enough to stall for a little bit. Now we're going to go ahead and Time Thief, <clears throat> see if we can get a, a usable monster. I don't know how we managed to do it, but we just keep getting monsters. I, I, The dude is playing Dark Magician, and we get nothing but monsters. No spell and trap cards, just nothing but monsters, and it kind of just sucks that it just keeps happening. Now, unfortunately, we're in a really bad situation. He's going to Magician's Rod into Circle, and Circle's going to get him something always. And then, and then this is basically the beginning of the end. Once they get, Once they get Circle and an Eternal Soul in rotation, it's pretty much... It's pretty much over, and then he's got this thing, which I did not expect. Our opponent's going to go ahead and Link Summon into something. Oh, never mind, he's Baron de Fleur. No, Chaos Angel, yeah, Chaos Angel is going to target to Banish. He's going to target our Time Thief, we can dodge that, so it's fine. Why he went into this, I don't know, but... And why he targeted this, I should say, I don't know. So we're going to detach, and we're going to be able to get rid of that. What is infuriating is that he's got the Magician's Navigation, which really actually kind of sucks battle phase you can't attack so it doesn't matter the magician's navigation is really like so frustrating because he's going to be able to summon a dark magician and a spellcaster and this guy is like unbelievable like he just has so many bricks in his deck but he just doesn't brick he just draws everything he needs his anime anime player uh we're going to activate the time thief and we're going to pay the maintenance cost on our messenger of peace Although, I don't even know how much that Messenger of Peace is really even doing for us right now. Because, like I said, he can just, yeah, that can just be outed at any moment. He can do that for Time Thief or it doesn't even matter. Then, of course, he's got the Magician's Salvation, which means he can summon the Dark Magician Girl out of the graveyard anyway. Because the second the Dark Magician hits the field, he gets to summon it for free. This is another duel that just slipped out of our fingers. There's nothing we can do. So, he's going to summon that plus another monster. It's incredible. All of the bricks that he plays, man doesn't brick. Yep, there goes another Chronicle Magician. Another Chronicle Magician. We got a Eye of Tamias, and we have no way to protect our Time Thief this time around. He's gone forever, and he's going to gain 2,500 permanently on this Dark Magician. Uh, all of those times we got monsters, 
the when it didn't matter but now we get a spell card when he's about to get banished and i guess we activate why not time thief hopefully we get something useful detach the eye of tomias get shrink i guess we just i don't know i guess we just pass i mean if he's smart he can beat us pretty easily here yeah, he's gone forever shrink is not useful we pay the maintenance cost on the on this why not um and then we just set the apophis and set the shrink and we just pass he's gonna activate eye of tamias which is gonna go into dark magician the dragon knight i guess that's that's the way to do it he's gonna go into dark magician the dragon knight so now we can't destroy any of his spawn trap cards and he's gonna be able to banish uh, he's going to banish the messenger of peace and i mean at least we have the vijam to protect this but honestly i don't even know what we can do at this point this is just this duel's pretty much pretty much over unfortunately we have like shrink vijam embodiment of the apophis like we just don't we don't have much usable stuff right now this is this is not looking good all right, I'm just going to scoop this one up. This one is, uh, this one's over. Our opponent just keeps making plays and making plays. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be sitting here for a half an hour just watching him make plays when our position is just so terrible. All right, we got demoted. We are officially back to Platinum 5. After all of that, we got back to Platinum 5. All right, we just won the coin flip. Uh, well, no, we lost the coin flip. Our opponent chose for us to go first. The hand's not too bad whatsoever. We have Time Thief uh, and Cubic and other stuff. We have a few interruptions. This is probably, outside of the Barrier Statue, the best possible hand we could possibly ask for, which is kind of cool. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go into Time Thief. And, um, yeah, we're going to see what we do here. We're going to go into Time Thief, Threatening Roar, and Cubic Ascension. All pretty good. And, like I said, we have uh, Iron Dragon essentially live if we need it. Which is kind of cool. So we're going to go here, here, and just pass. And hopefully we we, we do half decently. It's a, it's a pretty pretty cool hand. Got to remain positive on hands like this. Because some of our hands have been really, really rough. Alright, standby phase. We're going to activate the Time Thief Redoer to get a card from the top of our opponent's deck. We'll see what we get. We get a monster. Again, today's been like monster day. We just have not... The Time Thief just gets a monster every single time today. We're going to summon the Baby Berry Magician Girl, which is one of the not-so-good ones. Uh, but you can add a Dark Magician Girl to his hand, which is whatever. We do have Iron Dragon still live. He's summoned right in our column. So if he summons something really important here, 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 we can essentially destroy it, which is kind of cool. All right, so our opponent's going to go to end phase. Um, we can technically destroy this row, which I'm... More than likely, I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to get rid of the Cubic Ascension because I'm trying to get in for some attacks and he's got really nothing going on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to activate. I'm going to detach the... It doesn't matter what we detach, but I'm going to detach. Do that. And I'm going to activate the Iron Dragon Tiamaton. And I'm going to summon it right here to destroy his row, including my Cubic Ascension. But I guess that card floats, so it's decent. And then we're going to activate... I get, we can activate Nefariousness. If this card's in the graveyard, you can target one monster. You control, destroy it. Special summon this card. It's not going to really benefit us because he's got less attack than the monster that we have. So I think I'm just going to... I'm going to pass on that effect. But it's cool that... Um, it's cool that we have it, right? I mean, it's, it's nice that we have the ability to do it. So now we got to do some more damage. That's not really going to help. Threatening Roar is still in play. We go ahead and activate to get a free card. It's going to be a spell card, actually. We'll see what we draw. I'm going to activate it immediately. So I'm definitely going to use that now. A thousand Knives. Purple Poison is an interesting card. So I guess we, we will summon that because if it gets destroyed, we get to pop a card. We can go into some more stuff, but he has nothing on the board. I would have gone into Sioux Ship, but he has nothing for us to even pop. Even if I wanted to pop something, I couldn't pop something. So, I guess we go to battle phase and just start attacking. Hopefully, we get some decent damage in here. After a day of doing terribly to anime players, I would love to actually do well against one. So, I'm going to set all of this stuff. Purple Poison. We have some floating. Actually, what's cool is Nefariousness. We can actually activate. 
Yeah, during the end phase, we can pop the purple poison with Nefarious just and then pop a card, which is actually kind of cool. Um, and I think we just we just end here and we just pass. Um, not not the worst thing ever. So some cool synergies here and there. We have Apophis to protect our life points, and we have Threatening Roar. So card for card, they're up in advantage by one, but it doesn't really matter because uh, we can we can turn things around a little bit here. So we're gonna go activate Time Thief. And Time Thief's going to get us a trap card, the best thing you could possibly get, which is nice. Uh, but we won't be able to float. Uh, not float, we won't be able to make ourselves disappear for a little while, Time Thief. He won't be able to uh, yeah, vanish for a little bit. He's going to summon a Magician Girl, which is fine with me. He's going to end of main phase, is fine with me. End phase, uh, we're going to activate Mr. Nefariousness to pop the purple poison to special summon itself and then i know that his card floats but it doesn't even matter because i'd rather save the time thief bounce for something else uh we're going to activate purple poison and we're going to destroy this he is going to be able to float and add back some magician girls from his hand from his uh graveyard to his hand totally fine with me i don't care you can add back barry magician girl because uh, we have game on board right now and i'd rather save the time thief for something more important because, like I said, he can add back the Barry Magician or whatever. His his board is empty. And that's more important to me right now. And then we just... Barrier Statue, that pretty much wraps it up here. That That is... This is, like, as good as our board can possibly get. Yeah, this this was this was a good one. Like, our opponent's deck was lower in power. It's, it's like we draw such great hands against the bad decks. But then when our opponent's playing, like, a decent deck... We're piling it decently. We just draw the most unplayable hands, which is frustrating. Uh, I should have summoned him. I could have summoned embodiment first, but let's just let's just go for game here. Let's not waste too much time. We really, really needed this game. Bam! There we go. Yeah, I've been losing to anime decks. Blue Eyes, Dark Magician. I, I I needed I needed this win really badly. All right, we've got no legacy tickets again. We've got Water Element and uh, Sandstone, which uh, this card we already have for sure, but not good. All right, we really need something good out of this pack. I don't even care if it's glowing or not. We really need something good because all day we've been pulling supers and ultras that have been totally useless. Infernity Archer, I don't believe is usable because, yeah. So basically we can special summon this card if it's in the graveyard, but um, if our monsters destroy a battle, we have to have no cards in hand. It's not like the worst card in the world. Another Infernity card. Um, yeah, discard your entire hand, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, this isn't like a bad card, but again, we don't have enough Infernities to really do anything. And more importantly, we don't have the boss monsters. That's kind of the issue. We really need more boss monsters. Beacon of White's a Blue Eyes card. Dark World Ascension is the Fusion card for Dark World, so that's not usable. Shadal Core is... Technically, it can summon itself as an effect monster, which is cool, but it's a level 9 effect monster, so... I don't really see what that really does, and it substitutes itself for a Fusion... And then you can target shit all spawn trap card out to your hand. We don't have any of those. Rocket Synchron's cool, but like, I mean, it can summon a level. This goes in our dragon deck for sure. Uh, we have a few usable cards that work with this card, like Nocto Vision, I think use, works with this. And we have Apps Router, uh, which also can work with this. But the problem is we have too many cards that work with other stuff that we, we don't have the payoff we don't have a level eight synchro so we can't even do anything with this even if we wanted to we got a true draco which is kind of cool because we have other true dracos um but the issue is we actually need true draco spell cards yeah uh we can special summon a true draco if this face up tribute summon most of these fields true yeah this actually goes in our um control deck so that's actually pretty cool we got the general all right next game uh let's see our hand's not looking too bad whatsoever i'm actually quite happy with it uh, yeah, we've got Iron Dragon. We lost a coin flip. We're going second. We'll see what our opponent's playing. They ended. You'd love to see it. I mean, you'd love to see it, but let's see. We don't have any special summons here, but we do have... We have a normal summon that we can just attack with, so that's fun. We'll attack with that. Our opponent has a response. Hopefully, they max see us. Please, I mean, just listen to me more often. I'm not going to shrink. I'm just going to pass. I'm not going to... I'm going to attack, and then I'm going to set stuff. That's what I'm going to do. I, I don't know why I said pass. Uh, so we're going to get 13. Our opponent probably thinks, so oh, that maxi really worked. No, man, we just didn't have anything else. <laughs> All right, so main phase two, we're going to set power frame because we want that one to stay on field. We'll set Paleozoic and we'll set the shrink. And then Tiamon is active and ready to go in a variety of different columns. Well, mostly just this column, but we'll, we'll see what this is able to do here. Paleozoic's not bad. We can discard... Vigom, we have Power Frame and Shrink, so we have a few different things. This would have been a sick hand if we had the Barrier Stat. Oh, 
I'm not playing against this. I'm not, I'm just not. Sky Strikers and Labyrinth, we just cannot beat. I don't I don't care how bad they brick, we just cannot beat them. They just get they have unlimited resources essentially. Uh, we our deck is too slow to compete with them in a grind game. All right, next game we just won the coin flip. Our hand's looking pretty good actually. We have a few different special summons. We have memory loss. We actually have a pretty decent. Uh, Decent situation here on our hands. We have the Crowley. We have the Endymion. Uh, we have the Special Summon, and we're going to be able to draw. Like we have some decent, decent cards here, actually. Yep, we have some decent stuff. We can actually send this to the graveyard and do stuff. Uh, let's see. We don't have any extra deck Magistus cards, which kind of sucks, but we can get an extra draw. But I'm cool with the memory loss right now. So I'm actually just going to normal summon out Crowley. And then I'm going to special summon out the Inkari Fire. And I could leave the Inkari on the field too. I could do that. Because um, I can use this special summon and then, you know, draw this card. Actually, I'll just save that for the next turn. I'll just, I'll just go into Time Thief and have Memory Lost plus Time Thief. That should be enough. And the next turn we can have that do something else for us. All right, so we're just going to set this memory loss, time thief memory loss, and this should be good. And the next turn we have um, this play if we want to make it. The Endymion plus this card, and then we get the draw and look at what we have. Uh, alternatively, we could have just uh, special summon Crowley with this, normal summon this, and then drawn, drew a card and put back the Inkari Fire. So we also could have done that. Uh, it sucks that we can't get the full effect of this card yet because it bounces dragons which we really can't do anything about and then on top of that if you it searches a polymerization fusion spell or fusion parasite but we don't have any of that stuff really to use here we're going to time thief to hopefully get something useful you get a trap card that's awesome your opponent conducts their battle phase twice okay so this is probably a bot which uh kind of sucks because it means it's that time of the month where we're getting free packs for no reason. But this episode's pulls have been just absolute dog shit. So I'm, I'm actually not even mad about that because we kind of need a new pack. This it's, it's been our pulls have been like URs that no one's ever heard of. Like you, you see the card and you're like, is that really a UR? Is that is that is that really a UR? Like you, have to, you have to be you're like in shock that it's even a UR. All right, we're going to activate the Time Thief. Yeah, our opponent is more than likely playing some sort of a bot deck. We got the same trap card twice. It's insane. Uh, we're going to activate this to special summon a spellcaster from our hand. And we're going to special summon this dude out. And then we're going to normal summon out the barrier statue. Why not? We actually can draw, but if we draw right now, we'll just have to put back whatever we drew anyway. So might as well just attack. All right, so we're just about almost at game here. And now we just pass and end. I don't think there's our opponent could possibly win. Plus, we have memory loss. We always draw like really cool, usable hands against like against like bots and like terrible decks. And then when we have like a good matchup, it's like like when our opponent's playing. I don't want to say meta, but like they're playing like you know regular dark magician or something. We'll draw like you know like like time thief shrink pass essentially. All right, just like that, it's game. Obviously, it's a bot. It's a self decay bot. It's one of the worst self decay bots I've ever seen either. But I guess it's that time of the month. It is the, uh, late in the month, so we do have to play against self decay. All right. So for our rewards, we get one legacy ticket. All right. Let's open this master pack. It doesn't seem to be glowing, but like I always say, there's so many rares that I would love to pull that I don't care if it's glowing or not. Raider's wing. Okay. So this card's actually not bad. It is essentially a free special summon in our deck because we have Time Thief. And Time Thief is a dark Exceed monster. We can just detach and special summon this. The problem is we already have to have Time Thief on the field in order for this to be good. And we don't have any Exceed monsters that do anything going first uh, other than Time Thief. Actually, if I remember correctly, we do have that Nightmare card. The Evil Swarm Nightmare. So perhaps we can use that. Maybe we can run this. This also has an effect where your opponent cannot target this card with card effects. Which is translated to the Exceed monster. Not a bad card, but... Perhaps not really usable for us unless we really look at the deck. Uh, we have some other fabled cards, but uh, this is not... I mean, it's not unusable. It's not a bad card. It's just we don't have a lot of... Here we go. Here we go. 
I clicked in the wrong spot. All right, that sucks. Sometimes I accidentally buy a little like shred click in the wrong spot. All right, I guess we look at these one by one. This is essentially a dinosaur that's 1800 attack. It's effect, if it's destroyed by battle by a power monster, each player takes 800, that's never gonna happen. Uh, this is one, one level two or lower Cyrus monster, which is not bad. Okay, so this works with Code Talkers. We still don't have any Code Talkers, but we have like all of these cards that work with Code Talkers. Uh, this is a Bujin card. We have a lot of Bujin cards, but we don't have any of the monsters that... Unfortunately, we don't have any of like the actual Exceed monsters, which kind of sucks. Uh, so we can't really use it. This is Rescue Ace, the field spell. We have only Rescue Ace spawn trap cards and a single Rescue Ace monster right now so we don't have enough to play that this is gold pride we don't have enough gold pride cards assault wyvern is a dragon um this actually isn't bad for our dragon deck honestly yeah it destroys an opponent's monster by battle tribute this card special summon one dragon from your hand or graveyard doesn't matter the level or anything like that and what's cool is you can attack tribute and then special summon something and then attack again so honestly this is just not a bad card definitely going in the dragon deck 1000 percent all right, here's our legacy ticket. Let's see what it is. I might start saving these for the end of the episode or at the beginning of the next episode. I think that might be cool. Uh, Blade, si Skater, and we do... Uh, this card's not that great for us either. Uh, yeah, I might start saving these for the perhaps the end of the episode or for the perhaps the beginning of the next episode. Maybe I'll do it that way, but... Because uh, opening with these one at a time, sometimes the cards are terrible when you open them one at a time. All right, we just won the coin flip. Our hand is looking pretty, pretty good. Other than the fact that I mean, we have there can only be one. By that's what I mean by good. So we're gonna set that, and everything else in our hand essentially is unusable. But there can only be one is good. I guess that's maxi. We're just not, we're not gonna summon anymore. So I, 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 our opponent believes in us more than we do. So we'll just pass here. Our opponent probably thinks, oh, we got them. They didn't get us. We just, we got ourselves. It depends on what they're playing, but this could be good for us because Run Ryu does float, except itself, so that's not good. So this card does technically float, but we don't have anything else in the graveyard. Uh, that's bad to see, but if it's Fluendereze, we technically have the out. There can only be one is the out to Fluendereze. And then Unbreakable Spirit's pretty good with one monster, which is what we have right now. Yep, we're going to wait to see Grave Digger, Trap Hole, Trap Trick. This is looking like a Trap Trick deck from what I can see here. Dimensional Wall. Honestly, this looks like a burn deck more than it is a trap trick deck. So this, there can only be one that could possibly do absolutely nothing. All right, our opponent's going to set four pass. Yeah, it's it's more than likely that the there can only be one is probably going to be a useless card. Uh, Barrier Statue is a decent uh, draw off the top. We're going to go ahead and summon that. So I guess we can stop some of the funny business if he has like Ojama tokens to summon on our board or something like that. And uh, he's going to go Trap Trick, which is fine by me. Like I said, the Ojamas, he won't be able to pull off. He's going to inflict 300. He's going to Trap Trick. And he's going to... I imagine he's going to just keep going and activating Trap Cards. Yep, 300 damage for each card they control. This is about as much as we're going to control, to be honest with you, because we have a very weakish deck. And they're going to activate Bad Luck Blast, okay? So they're going to do a bunch of damage, essentially, to us with... A bunch of different stuff and then they're gonna set a card with trap trick and we're gonna know what it is but still they're gonna be able to set a card they didn't actually do that much damage they're gonna set a dimensional what is that wall I'm still gonna attack because I have really no choice I mean technically I can go into technically I can go into the sioux ship and then but the sioux ship doesn't do anything because he'll just pop our card anyway so I mean it, it really doesn't matter we're, we're actually better off just splitting the attack into multiple pieces because then we'll we'll do 15 no we'll take this 15 we're, we're fine with it we're, or we could have just waited but like we'll fi we'll fine I'm, I'm fine with taking the 15 here because next turn hopefully we summon a bigger monster so we'll take the 15 ourselves that's cool whatever and then main phase two i think we just we just pass here there's nothing else we can do we can go into the sioux ship but they have one card we're up in card advantage but we're very down on life points well like half the life points he has so depending on what he has face down um, this could spell, ugh, of course he's got this, Pot of Zyres is basically a Pot of Greed is in his deck, so he's going to get three new trap cards, essentially, to, to cause his damage, and he's going to set only one, so I don't even know what the, these are probably like Scrap Iron, Scarecrow, and like garbage like that, but 
I mean, obviously that stuff's good. Messenger piece does absolutely nothing for us right now. If I could, I'd straight up discard these cards if I could. But we can't, so... We'll see what we do here. We're going to attack with the Ron Ryu. He's going to activate Secret Barrel, so he's going to do some damage to us, but obviously we're going to do more to him. It's 200, yeah, it's 1400, and then we're going to do 25 to him. If, if our attacks go through, because he could have Scrap Iron Scarecrow or something like that. So we're down to 19. Our life points are really low. And unfortunately, a Lava Golem is summonable under the Barrier Statue, which kind of sucks. You know what I could have done? Actually, I just realized I could have gone into Crooked Cook and then popped everything on our board. So we have less cards, so we burn us for less. That's what I actually should have done. Now he's going to set a bunch of cards. Yeah, he's going to set a bunch of cards and end phase. Okay, we're going to get the Possessed win. I'm actually going to Normal Summon, and I'm going to try to go into Crooked Cook if I can. He's going to Maxi. That's fine, because I'm... Oh, yeah, it's not actually that fine. I mean, I think we just go to Battle Phase here, and hope he doesn't have the stuff needed to beat us. So we're just going to go. hopefully just go to Battle Phase and just start attacking. Like I said, he can't summon uh, the Ojamas, which is good. And hopefully we're just able to, our attacks go through and we win, hopefully. We'll see. Wow, okay. Yeah, I, I what I should have done earlier probably is I could have gone into Crooked Cook and then popped everything on my board. But I guess it worked out in the end anyway. Alright, so we got three Legacy tickets. That was a well-deserved clean win. No complaints. Alright, Master Pack time. Hopefully we get a really, really good pull here because I could really use one right now. Like I said, all episode we've been getting stuff that is just... I, I don't want to say it's bad, it's just unusable for us. Uh, Venom card doesn't really apply to us. Fiendish Rhino is actually a good card, uh, but we don't have like a fiend centered deck, so it might not work for us. Cross Porter is not the worst card in the world, but it's a Neospatian card. Uh, Giant Trap Hole, I have to read this. Two or more monsters are summoned at the same time, destroy all monsters on the field. I don't know how often that really happens. It's very specific. Advanced Draw is not bad, but it's a draw card for cards we don't have. It's another art. Finally, we get a cubic card other than the one we have. All right, this card's not bad, but unfortunately, uh, we don't have any of the other stuff to make this usable right now. What is this reboot Mech Lord card? Okay, that's not going to work. And then, why was this pack glowing? Why do they always do this to us, man? Um, it, uh, this is the field spell for some morgues. Yeah, none of this stuff is usable for us. It's just all archetype specific for stuff we just don't have. All right, let's open these legacy tickets. Let's see what we get here. Uh, I'm, I'm quite excited about what could possibly be in here. We've got, this is a Resonator card. No, this is just a Synchro related card. Uh, which we don't, uh, Release Restraint is a bad card. It's for, uh, Guy the, Guy the Fierce Knight, or not Guy the Fierce Knight, the other dude. Uh, this is actually, flip, it's a flip monster. It's actually that raccoon monster that we have. So it summons a level one beast. Le no, level two beast from our deck. Um, it's a flip monster. It's a little too slow for us. Return one fusion monster, both players. This isn't like a terrible card, but we don't fusion summon enough, unfortunately. So unless we're getting rid of our, has to have cards in both of our banished piles. Like it's basically good against Despia and Zara the Mont's not good. And then memory of the adversary. Okay, so this is basically uh, a card that can be good, but yeah, this card can be good. We might actually be able to use this. When our opponent's monster declares an attack, take battle damage act equal to that monster's attack, banish that monster during the end phase, special summon them. It's basically another card that protects the barrier statue. So in that regard, this card's not a bad card. So we might be able to play memory of an adversary. Plus we get to special summon that monster back at some point. So I think this is a card that we play. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and play the memory of the adversary. I think I'm gonna cut the dark renewal. Like this card has been kind of bricky for us. I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I don't know why too, because we have a lot of spell casters, but the problem is we have a lot of spell casters, but we don't end on the spell casters. We end on time thief. So this card's just been doing nothing. It's been more bricky than good for us. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it. All right. We just won the coin flip. Let's see how well our hand looks. It looks pretty pretty. That looks about, look, that's the best our deck can do. So yeah, it's pretty good. I'm not unhappy with it. We've got Barrier Statue and True Goodies, and we've got Threatening Roar, and we've got about as good as our hand's going to get. I don't know if I want to set this yet. Yeah, I don't want to activate that because I have Threatening Roar anyway. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and pass on this. This is, like I said, this is as good of a hand as we're ever, ever, ever going to get. This is like, this is what our deck does at its best. It's either this or Time Thief. We could have summoned Time Thief first, then it would have been better. But like, this is, this is basically our deck here. Now we're gonna, our opponent's going to special, uh, normal summon Stratos. They're going to start searching. They are playing heroes. They're not just faking it for the, for the cameras. They are legitimately playing heroes. They're going to search Ferris. And I think we're, we're battle phase. We're going to go straight to battle phase. I'm going to just activate the threatening roar to get rid of their battle phase. They're going to go to main phase two. I imagine they're probably, yeah, they're going to go to end phase, which is fine with me. I, we still have, there can only be one, which absolutely like shreds heroes. Usually messenger of peace doesn't really need to be activated right now. I think Dragoodies is probably better than messenger of peace. So I'm going to go ahead and just normal summon this. And I'm going to... Yeah, I think I'm just going to normal summon that. And now we're one monster up, which is usually pretty good. So we're going to attack over the Stratos. He could have the... Yeah, that's that's the dangerous thing, is he could have one of the... What's it called? The the other hero cards. So we, we have two options here. We could Messenger of Peace or we could Dragoodies. And both options aren't bad, but I think Dragoodies is the better option just in case. Because Messenger of Peace, he could always summon like a 1300 attack monster, just attack over our barrier statue. So I think that the Dragoodies is probably better. Plus that way we get to still attack with win if we need to. So I'm just going to activate the, the Dragoodies and I'm going to pass here. That's, I, I would say that's probably the best option. Uh, Messenger of Peace, like I said, isn't bad, but this I think is slightly, slightly better. And I don't think Heroes has like a 2,000 normal summon. They have an 18 normal summon. They have a 19 normal summon, but they don't have a 2,000 normal summon unless they have uh, the Skyscraper on the field and then they're using that monster. I don't I don't believe that they have it. End phase. Okay, this is what we want to see. So now we got to we got to keep the Messenger of Peace and we got to keep the, the other card. He's going to be able to discard. He's going to di discard Increase, whatever. Doesn't matter. Ca Caliber's pretty good, so... Now I think we go to battle phase here. Yeah, we go to battle phase. And I think we just get in for as much as we can here. Get a couple, land a couple of attacks. Our opponent has a response to one of our attacks, which is, oh, increase. Yeah, we can, you can place that in this ball and trap card zone. Okay, that's fine. And we're gonna get in for some more attacks here. And there's the last attack. Like I said, we still have our ace in the hole. We still have the, uh, we still have the, the, there can only be one available so we'll see we'll see where that goes are they going to normal summon stratos are they going to search again they should should be searching the neos dude that's what they should be searching if they're smart they're going to search neos the one that helps them attack over stuff that's what they should search for but i don't know if that's what they're going to search for now they're going to search for liquid soldier Maybe they already have the Neos, but then again, it would have probably been triggered by now. So they're going to try to attack over the barrier statue. I don't think that they read any of our cards. We're going to go to damage step, activate the Dragoodies. Like I said, if they have, if they have their, nope, they don't. Yeah, if they had Neos, they would, if they just searched Neos, the um, Honest Neos, they would have just been able to attack over our barrier statue. I don't know why they didn't do that. But then again, they don't know what our back row is. They don't they didn't know what Dragoodies did. They just kind of just they just threw in a them they just threw a monster out there. They didn't know what they were like getting into. And we won! Look at that. Fantastic. We beat a deck way better than our deck. Just like that. Alright, we got two legacy tickets. Alright, Master Pack time. We got a Master Pack here to open. It's glowing again. The last one absolutely lied to our faces. That was horrible. Uh, let's see, this one's not really glowing anywhere. We've got another pendulum card. It lets you change a pendulum monster and one monster punk changes the battle position. This is a tuner, which is pretty cool. So this card overall is actually not that horrific, but not that great either. Its scales aren't great. We've got an extra hero after beating heroes. It requires two hero monsters, which uh, we don't think we have enough of. And another Sherry Nui card, uh, but... We don't really have enough usable ones, and this one's really low level. Uh, another, we have Constellar cards, but not enough to really be a usable one. Uh, this is a great card, but we don't have the archetype. Uh, Oracle of the Sun. So this is actually a free special summon if our opponent controls a monster, but I mean, it's a level 5, so it doesn't really operate with the rest of our deck, unfortunately. Uh, Gishki Natalia is another card that I don't believe is going to be usable for us. It's just, it is a level four that returns to the hand at the end. 
and it lets you target a Gishki monster in your graveyard, turn that to the top of the deck. This card is really not good. And then we've got, why was this pack glowing? And this is Lodge's Flame, this is a Valkyrie card. Wow, this pack is terrible. And it was glowing, why was this pack glowing? Can somebody explain this? What's going on with us lately? All right, let's open this, these Legacy Packs. I mean, we our Legacy Packs have been actually better this episode than our Master Packs. Uh, we just pulled that, and we've already pulled that. So two two cards that aren't really usable for us. That's crazy. We literally just pulled that. Like, so I'm just getting play sets. Chain and Lizard. Jane is a Twilight Sworn. He's not that great. And then Lizard Soldier is just a Lizard. All right, we just lost the coin flip. Uh, we'll see how this goes. We've got Memory of an Adversary, Memory Loss, Power Frame, Penguin Squire, and Dimion. Pretty good hand. Our opponent's playing Dark Magician, which is somewhat annoying, but... They don't have circle. As long as they don't have circle in rotation, we can usually have a decent chance against them. But the second circle is in rotation and they have some of the other stuff, it's, it's usually over. Alright, so this is really not good right now. They've got Eye of Tamias, they've got Dark Magician, and they've got Navigation and Graveyard, which means they have a spell trap card to gate. Uh, we've got some stuff here, but not really anything too crazy. We're going to set the Endymion. All right, we're going to activate the Penguin Squire to flip our monster. They're going to activate Skill Drain, just what we needed to see. Uh, this really sucks, but I mean, we do get our summon for free, but I don't, I don't really know what I'm going to do now, unfortunately. I, I think this duel is pretty much over, change the level, it's irrelevant. Uh, that's negated. We have power frame this and this. I mean, I guess we just pass here. Someone did an attack one because I'm hoping they attack it so we can power frame it. And then we've got memory of an adversary. So we've got a few different cards that are usable, but of course they do have the negate in the graveyard, which is the magician's navigation, which kind of sucks. And then even this memory of an adversary is actually unusable right now because we have because of skill drain. All right, they're going to go straight to battle phase. They're going to attack with this. I think I'm going to go ahead and power frame. And if our opponent negates the power frame, then we've got the memory of the adversary because they're going to have to redeclare an attack anyway. Yep, they're going to do that, which is fine. And then they're going to uh, negate that. And I think now we can activate the memory of the adversary. This is going to get banished, and eventually we're going to get the Eye of Tamias monster on our field, which is a 2800 attack monster. It's pretty cool. So we're going to take a lot of damage there, and, and then Power Frame is going to get lost in the rhythm. And now Penguin Squire, they're going to feel comfortable attacking the Penguin Squire for us. Memory of an Adversary is already kind of a decent card. It's, it's already proving its worth. I don't know when we get our monster. Barrier statue is not usable right now because obviously we've got our own problems. Uh, we have, we can go into a level eight synchro, but I mean, it's not really help. I mean, it's 2,500 attack. That's cool, right? I mean, I guess we go into it. It's better than what we have on the board here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, we can actually do some damage too if we do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I can go into a variety of cards here. I can go in... Time Thief doesn't do anything because we have Skill Drains on the field. This is 2500 attack, so I guess that's pretty good. And then we've also got this Paladin, which if we crash with Dark Magician or if Dark Magician crashes with us, uh, we do get some damage, so that's better than what we've got right now. So I'm going to go ahead and summon that out onto the field. And I'm not going to crash. I'm just going to leave this the way it is. I'm going to end, and then eventually... I don't know at what point, but we, we are supposed to get this uh this card to our hand during the end of your opponent's next turn so at the end of this turn we're getting eye of tamias on our side of the field they're going to activate this this is not looking good because if they get the circle circle or eternal soul that's when things just things go very very wrong whenever eternal soul and circle are in play all right they're going to put the fusion spell on top of the deck which does suck i probably should have crashed with the the Dark Magician, but I want to keep some board presence, because obviously they have Eternal Soul, so they have Endless Recursion, so even if you destroy one Dark Magician, they can get another one at any time. Uh, but this is not looking good, I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, they're going to go into the Dark Magicians, which is, I believe, 2800 attack exactly, which sucks, because now the Eye of Tamias that we're going to get is not going to be as useful, because 
Uh, yeah, this is this is pretty much over now. They're gonna attack over our monster. I should have just crashed. They're gonna attack over our monster. At memory of an adversary will summon back this thing. We have exactly not enough attack. And even if we do attack over their monster, they unfortunately get to float into two monsters, which sucks. So I guess we set this and we just pass here. That really sucks. The Dark Magicians, that really, really actually sucks. And we're in a dangerous situation because, like I said, if they can get the circle and all that other nonsense, we can really be in bad shape here. All right, they're going to go straight to battle phase, which is fine. We're going to activate the Unbreakable Spirit. And we're going to gain a bunch of attack. I, like I said, I should have crashed over that Dark Magician with the Enlightenment Paladin. I should have activated that and damaged that, but it doesn't matter because, technically speaking, he's got Skull Drain up anyway. Uh, it gave us a brief moment to activate the memory loss, which is cool, but obviously that's not doing much. This will allow it to summon a Dark Magician and a Dark Magician girl, obviously, but honestly, they're not really doing much right now, regardless. Alright, here comes Dark Magician and Dark Magician girl. He's going to summon them, I guess, in attack mode. I don't even know why he would do that, but that's fine. He's going to summon them both out in attack mode. That's not going to do anything because he's got... The skill drain anyway. His own skill drain is like hurting his own deck more than it's hurting us. Like unless he has the eternal soul loop with everything else, like it doesn't really matter. Our opponent's going to synchro summon into Chaos Angel. Uh, this is another card we just have no way to out. Even if he activates the effect right now, I can change it to defense, but that doesn't change anything because we have 2800 attack and he has 2800 defense. Like what are the chances, man? What are the chances? I could change, like I said, I could change it to defense, but it's not going to help anything whatsoever. Yeah, he's going to get negated, but that really, really sucks. Every monster he has just cannot be outed by us. So I guess we go to battle, we attack over the Dark Magician Girl. It's our best bet. And then we set the Apophis. And just pass here. This is, like I said, this is our best bet. The skill drain is like wrecking us right now. But it's actually stopping him to a large degree, too. Our opponent's actually going to decide not to attack. They're probably scared of our back row, which is quite nice. I am quite happy about that. Cubic Ascension's pretty cool, especially in, in the scenario we're in. Uh, I guess we do set that card. Uh, we can go into a rank 4 Exceed monster, but that doesn't really help us in any way, uh, being that we're under skill drain, so none of them are going to do anything anyway. So I think we just we just pass here. We could out this skill drain, we could probably win this game, but we just have to out this skill drain really badly. And this is getting scarier and scarier because he's closer to drawing Circle and Eternal Soul and all that other stuff. So the closer he gets to that, the further we get from winning. Alright, they're going to go to battle phase, oh, end phase, they're just going to end there, which is fine with me. Uh, this isn't bad actually. When a monster declares an attack. But I guess we just save this. I mean, I guess we can out his monster. I, I, we'll do this. We'll set the statue. Oh, wait. It doesn't even matter because skill drains on the field for the second effect anyway. So it, it, it literally does not matter. I was going to say we can use this to out the monster. But as long as skill drains on the field, it's not, it's not really possible. That's the other issue we have. Our boss monsters are just really weak. We have nothing in our extra deck that's really that strong. Uh, even if we wanted to, we couldn't get over this with a single, every with a single one of our extra deck monsters is like, look at these attack ones, like 23, 24, 2500 is our strongest extra deck monster, which is, which is kind of sad. Even like Firewall, uh, a rank four, like a, a, a link four is still, he's going to finally work up the guts to attack. We're going to go ahead and yeah, we're, we're going to go ahead and activate Cubic Ascension and there's no point to summon the Frau line because it doesn't really do anything. And he's just going to destroy our monster. Yeah, because skill drains on the field, of course. That's not going to do anything right now. We got to get the skill drain off the board somehow. Messenger of Peace. I mean, okay, that buys us time. I'll just do that. I mean, the problem is I really don't want to be buying time against this deck because his deck is actually... Like I said, the second they get their full setup, I'm, I, I lose here. This all happened because I didn't attack with that Enlightenment, position, Enlightenment Magician. Our opponent's going to end phase, which is fine. I really need, like, back to square one or something like it. Shrink is something like it. Okay, we could possibly win now. I do not want to pay the maintenance cost for this. 
Uh, no, I don't want to pay because I think I'm, I have the win here. Yeah, I have the win here. So I'm going to flip this to attack mode. I'm going to flip this up and flip it to attack mode. And summon it in attack mode, I mean to say. I'm going to summon this in attack mode. I think I might have the win here. Because I can also, when a monster declares an attack, so even when our monster declares it, let me do some math here. This is 54 minus 35. Okay, this might be game here. Let's go to battle. Uh, declare an attack with this. Activate shrink. Reduce this attack. This goes to 17. It's 1050. Uh, we attack with this. Fraulein can activate to summon itself. And this... Yes! We got that win. I can't believe we got that. We almost blew it by not summoning that enlightenment... I mean, not attacking with that enlightenment paladin. But we actually did end up winning. Alright, so we've got no legacy tickets. We got 25 gems and griddle, which is not a usable card. Alright, our opponent's deck was this right here. They're actually only playing one singular eternal soul and one singular magician circle. So... They might want to. They might want to change some things up. Uh, honestly, in this deck, that was a little bit. This is a little bit of a disaster. Definitely beef this up. Definitely beef this up, um, because I mean they should have won that duel. All right, this is our last master pack of the episode. We've got. Let's see what we get. Hopefully, we get something good. It's a UR. Let's see if it's a usable one. Um, hopefully, it's not. A, well, technically, I don't think the pack ever lies with the URs. I don't want to say anything, but like I don't think they lie with the URs. Uh, we've got. A two level six monsters. Do we have multiple level sixes? Yeah, in that de the other deck we actually do have multiple level six monsters. This card's actually not really that bad. So if we can get two level sixes, we can summon any monster from our graveyard, which is quite good. So maybe this goes in that deck that we have with the uh, the true Dracos and stuff like that. This could actually be a usable deck. It's actually kind of a cool deck, kind of a cool card. Uh, Abyss Actor. We don't have enough Abyss Actors right now. We actually have the Abyss Actor Link Monster which is a UR, but now we have another Abyss Actor card. This is our second copy of that. Uh, danger Response Team is not a bad card, but we don't have enough. We have one Danger total. Xsaber Excel is not really super usable. It's really low level. Watch Cat is interesting. Okay, this is actually really, 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 really good. Um, basically, if we control no monsters, we can special summon this card during the end phase. If this card was special summon, we can banish it, set one continuous spell. We have a way. This is Unreal. We have a way to search there can only be one wow that's actually really good that is definitely going in the deck like there's no doubt in my mind that goes in the deck we can now set up barrier statue plus actually we can set up a lot of things this card is really really this is probably our best pull of the entire episode this is really good we also have um not goes in match we have gravity mine too we have some other continuous traps but this is really good i definitely have to look at what we have this is a really really good pull and then Primal Congrate this is our second copy of this. I haven't played the first one, but now we have two copies. Let's see what this is. Me Ooh, my God, that is so good. This is literally my favorite Link monster of all time. I swear to God, that is insane. I was just complaining about this. Oh, my God, that is so good. That is one of the best pulls we could have possibly like pulled. Wow, how the hell am I going to summon it? That is really good, but I don't know how I'm going to summon it. That is incredible. Now, we don't have IP, so that is like, that is insane. I have so much to like, I, I'm, I'm in shock right now. Screw those legacy tickets we didn't get. This has been a great pack. This has been a fantastic pack. We finally have a boss monster other than, now this is a monster worth building around. Because uh, he's like really, 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 really good. I'm so excited for this. He can't be targeted. He gains attack equal to your opponent's monster. He shovels a monster a card away when he leaves the field. This thing is outrageous. Man, this is a really good pull. This is like on, on par with like Time Thief. The problem is this is so much more difficult to summon than Time Thief. It's not even it's not even funny. Wow, I'm in a little bit of shock here. I'm just looking at this card. I can't believe I'm looking at it. Wow, that was, what a banger to end on. We have this, which is probably usable. We have this, which is... I don't know if we're going to be able to summon it, but probably usable. And then, of course, we've got the Watch Cat, which searches there can only be one. We had some horrific pulls in this episode but man what a what a pull to end on all right so for our decks here this is just some ideas we've had we have the hot sauce deck so we've got to definitely adjust this i gotta play this dude for sure avermax goes in pretty much every deck i have to avermax is crazy it's so much better than like firewall because firewall is good but all he does is really just bounce but this is like really crazy it makes so many cards better like this graveyard of the wandering souls 
the tokens can finally do something. I have a lot of thinking to do. I don't know how I'm even going to summon this, to be honest with you, but I got to find a way to do it. Uh, so, Crusader Avermax is crazy, and our Yugi Jr. deck, this is going to be really good. I don't know if we can spam four monsters. That's our re really our biggest issue. Uh, maybe this is going to be like a card that we summon later in the duel, not like right away. Uh, because I don't know how long it's going to get. I don't think we're going to be first turn Crusader Avermaxing anytime soon. Neither do we really want to because most of his effects benefit from have, being able to attack over your opponent's monsters and stuff. So I really have to kind of look at our deck and what it's able to do, both this deck and some of the other decks. But man, what a crazy pull to end on. And Watch Cat and that random rank 6 monster. Wow, what a crazy pull. Thank you for watching, guys. La 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 la